I tell you what, Dave, that is the last time I ever filmed something so disturbingly popular yet morally dubious. That's already happened to me twice. How did you get rid of it? Well, I, I, I watched and I explained all the paranormal activity movies and he went, what? Are you filming this? Well, yeah, I'm trying to catch the demon. That makes sense, I guess. All right, so in paranormal activity- Before you start, can I film us making it? No! I don't remember any of that. I've got to tell you, I am not the person to help you in this situation. This is not my area of expertise. Oh, a disclaimer. Thank you, Paramount, for showing us a tightly edited 86 minutes of a real murder and demon possessions. Spoiler alert. You're spoiling everything! Thank you. If I thought you released an actual snuff film into theaters without asking permission from the family, I would be very upset. Disappointed! Oh, uh... Anyway, college English major Katie has a problem. Well, I guess two problems, since once she graduates, she'll basically be unemployable. <laughs> I, I know this because... Well, I'm an English major and hoping to be a, a teacher soon. Really? Oh wait, I guess three problems, because she also can't correctly pronounce her boyfriend Micah's name. Hello, Mika. Tisa! Mika! What the hell is a Mika? In this particular instance, a Mika is apparently a day trader who has purchased a decent-ish camera and who hopes to film evidence of some of the weird paranormal activity that's been going on in their new house. Hey, that's the name of the show. Which is the the third problem that Katie has, is the, 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 the paranormal the activities. We're gonna have a very interesting time capturing whatever paranormal phenomena. He didn't. Damn it. Mika is so upset. Mika struggles to gather any concrete evidence of this activity, however, because his hands are shaky as oats. Like Quaker oats. Like Quakers? Just Google it. Of course, I've known that for a long time. Like, if this were the Book of Eli, Denzel Washington would have shot Mika in the head like a hundred times by now because Mika is definitely a cannibal. <laughs> But no, the maybe demon wants me to watch Paranormal Activity, and in the world of there, it's, it's September 18th, 2006, which is the day that Edward J. King, the 66th governor of Massachusetts, died, so I'm gonna assume that Ed is the one doing the haunting. <laughs> Also, we're in San Diego, and Katie has both a pretty sweet car and a pretty okay butt. Oh my god. <laughs> and I know this is a dick thing to say, but when I first saw this movie in college, I'm fairly certain I spent the majority of the runtime trying to figure out how attractive I personally found Katie. Not the most progressive thing to do. What, what is this? I just like your feet. This is but there was very little else going on in the actual movie, as you'll soon learn. So in the interest of gender equality, I'll allow you all to spend the rest of this video deciding if Dave is attractive or not based on his sexy voice. You can give Dave a taste of my own medicine. What do you think, Dave? Say something sexy. Like in a sexy voice? Or yeah, like, that, that was it. That was perfect. What do you think? That's like a 10. That's a hot voice. Can I get a little strip tease? Sorry. Bullshit. Okay, back to what this movie is ostensibly about. Bullshit. 
but also the ghost. There's some weird happenings happening in their house. Samika is like, maybe it's one of the neighbor kids stalking you, Katie. And Katie's like, well, unless that kid has been following me around since I was eight years old. We'll explain that later because right now, Mika's playing unplugged electric guitar. Oh my god, they hear something! That's best. The uh, ice maker. It's the ice maker. Stay cool. Ooh. If that got your blood pumping, just wait, because your blood is about to pump right out your ass, because wow. Intense. This movie is. That's just the start. It's the ice maker. My anus is bleeding. Mika decides to film them sleeping because A, if something weird happens while they sleep, they'll know, and B, because he's trying to, you know, get Katie to make a sex tape. Excuse me. What? Camera's not off. Yikes. Unfortunately, Katie isn't interested because this movie had like a $15,000 budget and the actress made, I think, literally $500. <laughs> even get Dave naked for $500, nor can I get him to put on more clothes. It's very upsetting and distracting. I need one or the other, okay? Sorry. <clears throat> but anyway, they sexlessly go to bed after first removing approximately 30 pounds of linen, and what do you know, at 2 a.m., there's like a, there's like a running sound. Just a running sound, an intense running sound. But holy sh**, that's not all. Because in the morning, Katie realizes her keys have been moved from the counter to the floor? I left them on the counter. Are you sure? Yes, they were really in the same spot next to your wallet. My anus! This ghost or whatever is f***ed up! Oh, they're so shaken. They swim in the pool in the middle of the day on a Tuesday. Because I guess college was easier in 2006 and day trading isn't a real job. Oh. Oh. And I guess nobody warned them about pool sharks. There's a shark in the pool! Watch out! Later, a psychic shows up and is like, Hi, hello, I'd like to get to know you guys. And Katie's like, Okay, well, Mika and I have been together for three years. And as I alluded to earlier offhand, I've been haunted since I was eight by like a shadowy mask. And my five-year-old sister saw it too, so it's legit. We saw it also. Absolutely. You both saw it. And we were both absolutely terrified. Really? But then our house burned down and nobody knows why. And then what, whatever was haunting me took a few years off to go to the Bahamas maybe. But then it haunted me again when I was 13. But I don't think anything burned except for my hormones because teenagers, am I right? The acne, self-consciousness, the erections. It seems to me that that's what we're dealing with. And then it disappeared again, but now it's back, probably. And I guess Ed the ghost is bad at human math and just keeps checking in every few years to see if Katie's legal yet. I'd like to spend a little bit of time getting to know you. At midnight, she becomes sexy. Because he... He's a respectful ghost. <clears throat> but the psychic is like, hot damn, girl, I think you've got a demon thing going on. But I'm really just a ghost guy. My area of expertise is dealing with ghosts. That's what I built my career around. I am a division manager. That is very important. Well, shit. That's actually very impressive. <laughs> you think YouTube is a fake job. Imagine having a whole ghost career. A lot of careers are based on real things. Yeah. What if there's beach? You'll need someone who's a professional in that. It seems to me that that's what we're dealing with. But he's like, uh, demons are a whole other thing in that they're meaner. And they don't have any super catchy 80s theme songs to tell us who to call in case I'm an attack by them. Who you gonna call? Dealing with demons is not my area. I'm very uncomfortable with it. There's no Casper the friendly demon. And even though Casper did seem very possessive of Christina Ricci. Can I keep you? This demon probably wants Katie. What it probably wants is <laughs> Once, once, Katie, you catch my drift. She is legal, finally. 16 with parental consent. <laughs> Look, you're describing all these women as legal. <laughs> <laughs> there are two kinds of women. Legal, illegal. You either get that right, or you pull a Jared. I built my career on this. <laughs> is Casper legal? He's like 200 years old, right? But he's a boy ghost. He's a boy ghost. <laughs> I don't know why that matters. He dies of like the flu. So you're right. He's like, he's like a hundred years old. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only backwards. But the real issue is not whether Casper is legal. He has no rights because he has no soul. He's dead. We're allowed to show him nude because they ain't got no soul. Christina Ricci is a child. So he's like, hey kid, I'm a hundred years. It's like a Twilight thing, right? He looks like he's 15, but he's actually 130 and has seen a lot of shit. What's it like to die? I'm very uncomfortable with it. 
Anyway, fortunately, I, the ghost guy, do know a demon guy. Great guy, super good with demons. He specializes in this sort of thing. He's in Los Angeles. You call him and he'll squirt some demon cream around or you know, whatever demon guys do and your problem should uh, clear right up. And Katie's like, oh, awesome, thanks. But Mika's like, no, don't call the demon guy. No particular reason other than, you know, it might advance the plot of this movie too quickly. And, and this is like hell itself. <laughs> Slow burn. Who you gonna call? Seriously, don't call a guy, okay? That's insane. Later, Katie applies deodorant before bed. Which, ugh, do people do that? Like, who are you trying to impress? Freddy Krueger? You smell great, bitch. We'll see, bitch. Okay, so, then Mika tries to trick Katie into a sex tape. That's the standby light. That is not the standby light, that's the record light. Yikes. But Katie says, how about instead you turn off the camera and we can do butt stuff. I think that probably was illegal in Kentucky, you know, the 12 states. <gasps> Either that, where they hooked up with an animal, or they transported dentures across state lines while inside of each other. Normal women don't do stuff like that. This girl is a wild <gasps> animal. I, I know why the demon wants her. She's willing to do things that are illegal. And demons love that. <laughs> we all like scrape the laws of 35 states to figure out the specific law that they broke. It's pretty cool. Every time I'm trying to think of something new in the bedroom, I check all the laws. <laughs> <laughs> What's illegal in some other state? that I can try here. Most of the activities in here, isn't it? Then after their butt stuff, they go to sleep and get this, the door moves around a little bit. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Holy hell! Then Mika's alarm goes off. I think it literally, I think it says 614. Why? Is that the best time for day traders to wake up? What does 614 do for you? What have we always said is the most important thing? Always be closing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant the things you eat. Okay. Anyway, Mika sees the door move on the footage and is like, wow, the door moved. <gasps> and Katie screams like she's being attacked by a demon. <laughs> because she saw a spider. You scream like that for a spider? I'm excited. And a spider is 10 times scarier than this freaking door squeaking, key moving demon. Hey, tell me what the point of this was. Later that night, Mika reads a book and comes to literally all of the exact same conclusions as the psychic. Almost verbatim, he said, it's not a ghost, it's a demon. Demons are bad. They're worse, even. The difference is that a ghost is like a human, but a demon is like a demon. It's not a human. It's just, and so therefore it's more mean, I guess. Well, that sounds actually like a demon. Yeah, that's what he said. Well, because ghosts are spirits of human beings. A demon is something different. That's what I just said. I said that. Then Mika gets pissed at Katie for not telling him that she was being haunted by a demon. He's like, you're gonna warn me, Katie. I took you to Chuck E. Cheese and everything. What was I supposed to say? I went on our first date. Hey, there's a demon that I think... No, but haunted. maybe on our 15th date or our 30th date. Mika is so upset. And yet, despite him apparently just fully accepting his girlfriend's demon's existence, he still is like, oh, but don't call the demon guy. I bet we can deal with this literal demon by ourselves. After all, I'm a day trader. A master of the day, man, if you will. Um, and, your, and your jobs? Because uh, a demon. Demon. Oh. demon. That night, Katie has a bad dream. Because I was across. <laughs> Jesus. I had the same dream. What? You okay? Yeah. You sure? Wild. Wilder. They hear banging. <laughs> and go to see what the banging is, but they find nothing that would make a banging noise. The next day, Katie hangs out with her friend who appears to have braces. I mean, you're allowed to have braces as an adult, but you're probably not often cast in a feature film while wearing those braces. Progressive. We will fight the woke in education. We will fight the woke in your mouth. We're having very intense girl time right now. They also probably paid her $50. She's probably still paying off those braces. She needed the money. I know it's bead time. Bees? Beads. Beads. Mika watches the footage from Nightmare Night and hears a weird noise about 10 seconds before Katie wakes up and is like, oh, I guess this demon is trying to talk to us. We should get a Ouija board. And Katie is like, no, you stupid shit. We should not get a Ouija board. Well, I listened to it. And Mika's still not into calling the demon expert though, because he's more of a DIY demon guy. <laughs> <laughs> and since he's not allowed to use a Ouija board, Mika tries to, uh, to hold out a mic just in the air and see if the demon will talk into it. 
It's it's sort of like a Marshawn Lynch interview in that he also he gets nothing of value. You have something to say in English this time? I usually put Parmesan cheese on my That next night, Katie hears a noise and wakes up. And there's another demon noise and a thud and the chandelier is swinging and Mika helpfully gets down on the floor to listen. Just, just in case this is an Indian in the cupboard scenario and the demon's like two inches tall and hiding under the bed. But unfortunately, Mika learns nothing of value and is shot by zero tiny arrows. Not this time. On night 15, Katie stands around for a long time and then walks downstairs and sits outside in the cold but doesn't want to come back inside. Freezing, Eddie. What are you doing? I'm afraid that my condition has left me cold. <laughs> and then there's a slam and somebody turns on the bedroom TV to static. What the f is going on? Come out! And oh, hey, there's Katie again. But she remembers none of these things. And I'll be honest, if I didn't take notes, I also might not remember any of these things. But I did. So I do, unfortunately. The next day, Mika's argument against getting a demon guy has evolved from, I think demon guys are stupid, to, I actually think demon guys, they're incompetent. And actually, exorcisms, a lot of times it just gets worse. Actually. So instead, I'm gonna loophole borrow Ouija board. You little f but this pisses Katie right the hell off. So she leaves the house and Mika, like it, follows. Yeah, it's probably taking a shit right now. You're gonna throw it away. Of course, that doesn't stop Mr. Demon from having some fun. So, you know, shit gets windy and the Ouija board catches on fire for a bit, but it's one of those non-damaging fires that actually just sort of etches sketches some weird symbols and Mika's like, oh, tight. Katie, check it out. I don't give a so Mika states to the camera that he's gonna try and be better about, I don't know, pissing off demons. I swear to abide by Katie's rules and regulations of- Pussy! Every relationship goes through this exact same phase. One of you always wants to anger the spirits and the other is much more hesitant. Been that way since Adam and Eve. And fun fact about Adam and Eve, they had kids. Cain and Abel, they were born. They count. And I also have kids, and I need to feed them before they murder each other. Sign up for my Patreon. Hypothetically, the future can be better. But then Mika dicks with the board some more, like Eve dicking around with that snake apple. Whoa, whoa, hey, whoa, no. What? I'm not supposed to do that. You're done playing with it. I want it out of the house. Oh, and also the friend comes back over and is also very down with the idea that there's a demon. Not a single character in this movie is skeptical in any meaningful way. They're just like, ah! Demons? Bummer! I had one last week. He moved my keys. I couldn't find him. I hate when that happens. What am I gonna do? Go to your house and mess things up for you? Where the f are my hard boiled eggs? It is the work of Satan. You might be wondering why they don't move at this point, but it's because the demon is following Katie and has like a million American airline miles. It'll just follow her wherever. It's not like that. The miles are the goal. So to combat this supernatural, malevolent force, Mika pours some baby powder on the floor in case the demon, you know, just is mad because he has a, a fire rash. But that night, something walks through the baby powder and leaves some bird-looking footprints. And if it turns out that they're being haunted by Big Bird, I'm gonna submit this to the Guinness Book of World Records for the best, greatest film ever. You did it! Congratulations! World's best bullshit. And Mika follows the prince into the attic where he finds a burned photo of Katie from when she was a kid. How to get burned? I, how to get burned? How to get burned? That makes no sense. And this makes Katie sad and it makes me sleepy. This also makes Katie be like, screw you, Mika. You've tried purchasing a camera and, and you also did the baby powder and yet the demon remains. Go make it progress. No, you haven't been having any progress. I'm calling the demon guy and wait, so Mika was pitching those things as solutions? I thought he was just like gathering evidence. I thought the Ouija board was his attempt to like do something about it, which now that I think about it, sort of makes the baby powder and really the camera like redundant at this point. Like surely they've proved it's real or at least that something bad is happening happening. They just need to figure out how to get rid of it. Go make it progress. Unfortunately, the demon guy also has a lot of American airline miles and, you know, he's out of town. Who you gonna call? Uh, well, I called 
Dr. Avery's, and he's... John C. How the f*** do you know? Uh, yes, he's out of the country. He'll be back. Fortunately, the psychic guy said he could come back tomorrow, even though we've already established that ghosts and demons are two different things, and he built his career on the former. For no reason at all. Like, when you have a cockroach problem, you don't call in the rat exterminator. Rats and cockroaches are two different things. Equally delicious, but different mouthfeels. Ah, oh, they probably taste the same. Of course, before that, there's more slamming. <laughs> and lights turning on. And general wandering around, hoping to catch a glimpse of a demon with his fire-rashed balls out or whatever. <laughs> And at one point, Mika even hands the camera to Katie. Mika, don't fucking come on. I'm honestly pretty surprised that she hasn't, like, flushed the camera down the toilet yet. Surely all the filming is pissing it off? I mean, look how crazy the Kardashians get whenever a camera is around. Stop! And also, did you know that my band has multiple songs in Keeping Up With The Kardashians? Every quarter I get, like, two Chipotle burritos worth of royalties. Because they keep playing it like Romania. <laughs> is that why you always show up with Kim and she hangs around? Yeah, yeah, that's why, yeah. Kim's always behind the camera. I wrote this when I was like 19. He's still our dad and we love him. Jumping him Oh, it's so powerful. It's in montage. You guys. Regardless, it's not really helping anything unless they intend to hand the footage off to Paramount for hundreds of millions of dollars in gross profit and to spawn a seven film franchise. In that case, yeah, keep that shit rolling. Did you go get the camera first? No. The next day, Mika's like, yeah, I think we should go to a hotel. I think a change of pace will really make the haunting more fun again. But Katie is like, Mika, we don't have the budget. As in the film doesn't have the budget. I want to stay here. And then there's a slam and Mika's like, oh no. <laughs> what is that? Daddy, chill. Mika, what the fuck you think it was? It's a demon. We've established it's a demon very many times. Well, that sounds actually like a demon. Yeah, that's what he said. Oh, yeah! The demon slams. That's what he does. He's slamming in the back of his... And what do you know? A picture is slashed up. Fuck. But really only Mika's side, because again, I think the demon's kind of got the hots for Katie. He's coming. And I'm interested to see what the comments think about Dave's sexy voice. Anyway, the psychic shows back up and is immediately like, Whoa! It is demon-y as shit in here. Wow. Do any of these ever blast out of the wall and have like a huge cum shot. I couldn't stop. I was having so much fun. This is overpowering. I cannot be here. I am making it worse. Again, my career is ghosting. Serious? And to prove this, poof, I'm gone. Well, serious? But again, dude, why did you come back then? What scenario did you think you'd be stepping into where you would be of use? I will help you. I will help you. He didn't. Do demons evolve into ghosts if introduced to the right evolutionary stone or whatever? Surely demons would be higher on the spectral hierarchy than ghosts. Also, do you not have literally any other colleagues who do know about demons or something? Is there like a real divide between ghost guides and demon dudes? Is your one friendship with a demon expert like a Romeo and Juliet thing? Star-crossed weirdos? Oh, then they're saying their lips to our hands too. Anal fisting? I'm very uncomfortable with it. I don't know. So Katie and Mika go to bed for the sexiest night yet. No, not because more butt stuff, but because the demon is now uncovering Katie's feet. Nice. Presumably for a midnight toe suckle snack. Yummy, yummy. But now there's a shadow on the door and Katie wakes up and... You know, I actually think this movie would be way more interesting if Mika was just gaslighting Katie. He comes across as a dick. Hey, chill out, all right? I'm trying to help this situation here. But I wish they'd fully lean into it and turn this into some sort of elaborate torture from the mind of a bored ass day trader, but no. The next day, Mika finds a website that says a girl named Anne had pretty much the same thing happen to her in the 60s, but calling the exorcist didn't work, and I guess she died. But as Katie points out, she's pretty. So... At least she went out on top. You telling me there's some girl from the 60s who had the exact same big ass titties? And come on, she died in the 60s, so it's like a 50 50 chance that a demon got her, or she just died from eating too many asbestos cigarette sandwiches. I mean, those things are just pure carbs and empty calories. How did she die? <laughs> They had no regulations then. Butt stuff all over the place. <laughs> Sexual favors, but he's just a boy. But we are British. Touche. Katie wants to study. 
Mika, please, will you give me five minutes? But Mika does not, and he's mad, and she's sad, and it's intense. What the f Mika is so upset. Because that's like half of all the known emotions in one scene. Will you stop following me with the camera? <laughs> What a deal. Later that night, Katie is fully dragged out of her bed and bitten in the in the back. You don't see it, so it's not illegal in this state. And I feel like this movie is actually just an extended metaphor for sleep training kids. The next day, Mika's like, okay, we're leaving. But Katie is like, no thanks, I'm comatose and grabbing a crucifix so hard my hand is bleeding. And Mika's like, well, forget calling an ambulance or something. I'm gonna burn that attic photo. Suck it, demon. This shit, I'm done. Is defeated. Katie says that she thinks she'll be okay, but I think they will not be okay based on the past three weeks of, <sighs> you yeah, know, whatever. Sure. But Mika's like, you're probably right, increasingly insane girl who recently gripped a crucifix so hard she bled all over her leg. Let's just go to bed. They fall asleep pretty easily compared to the situation they're facing. Every day should feel that good. And Katie wakes up and stands over Mika for a while and then heads downstairs and screams like a lunatic, causing Mika to run down after her. <laughs> and then it's eerily quiet for a few minutes until... <laughs> A blood-covered Katie hugs Mika's body at the camera. What the hell was that? And smiles in a real demon-y, possessed way. And then some text explains that three days later, cops found Mika's body, but that nobody has ever found Katie or her body. And then a little bit later, some more text says, oh, this is all fake, lol, don't sue us. We didn't, I, this is not a stuff film. They, they're not dead. Maybe. I'm done. <laughs> Just so nobody yells at me, my guess is that the majority of these from here on out are the unrated slash slightly longer versions because, you know, BitTorrent gives what it gives. And you don't ask questions. Oops. Besides, if Dave's PC melts, it's probably because of all the other stuff on it. On that note, Paramount feels really bad for all the definitely real people who died. Also, I, Jordan, am sorry if you're like, ha <laughs> dead. Like, bro, that's so funny, I'm dead. If you are that, then here's a statement for you. Sorry, you're dead. Ha <laughs> ha, dead. We quickly meet a baby and two parents and an older daughter, Allie, and a nanny named Martine who speaks primarily Spanish. Es un bebé muy especial. Sí. And a dog who probably doesn't speak any language. No, no. Although watch to the end to find out. And a couple of clarifications. This is a dirty daddy. Don't be on my seat. And the baby is named Hunter, and the sister is the dad's kid, but not the mom's. And also the mom named Christy is Katie from the first movie, sister. Hey. And twist, this definitely not a movie, just actual crime scene footage we've released in theaters is just about a month or so before the last movie, except for this part that you're watching, which is like a year before. Cause like I always say, prequels make for the best sequels. Why go forward when you get when you can do the opposite of that? The terror begins almost immediately with an inexplicably open door. Hey, somebody left the front door open. The scary door. Don't do that. And this 50 inch monster. No, Dave. I'm not talking about me. Put your pants on. You jerk off. God, what's with the salad dressing? Again. Bone Newman shaking it frantically. You were gonna lose your fridge privileges, mister. Uh huh. Oh, and these producers really know what makes a movie a good movie. A definitely, probably attractive woman with huge background knockers and soft, firm, pillowy focus. Art. Thy name is Big Ass Titties. There we go. Pretty cool that Katie and her sister are both hooking up with dudes who are as end home videos as they are huge facades. Yeah, play with that baby. My sister did good. Now it's maybe a year later or otherwise Hunter has just eaten a ton of beef because kid is freaking huge. Es un bebe muy grande. And the house is also inexplicably trashed, either by burglars who apparently didn't steal anything or possibly by a big ass baby Hunter on a tear. I guess it could also be a literal demon, but that'd be crazy, right? 
you know. Oh no, of course not. That would <laughs> that would be ridiculous. Daddy hires a couple lesser members of Creed to install security cameras around the house in the hopes that they'll make footage that's slightly less nausea inducing. We failed. Higher budget equals higher camera count and more shots of a pool at night. Oh shit. Did the light just go out? Man, I hope we see a static shot of a pool literally every single night for the rest of the movie. And then maybe if we could follow it up with some static shots of the kitchen and the living room. Oh, perfect. There's nothing here. There's no, oh, no. There's nothing here. Every night we have to do this? It just cuts to the interesting one. The dog tries to get into the basement, probably in the hopes of finding a more interesting movie down there. But no opposable thumbs means no dice. There can be only one. Hunter's high chair falls over on its own. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! Probably spilling Cheerios everywhere because this demon is next level. It does not care about the rising cost of groceries impacting the American family. Aww, everything's fine. Those look like actual Cheerios too. None of that off-brand value knockoff shit. Not cool, Ed. That's sick. Later, Martine tries to bless the house or whatever with both hand motions and apparently with a massive shit. Look at what Martine left. Oh. See? Disgusting. I'm gonna throw up. Like in all seriousness, are we supposed to believe that the haunted ghost literally took a sh** in this toilet? There's like a live crawdaddy in there. Hello, my baby. Hello, my... Or was it the nanny? She clogged it again. Or was the daughter just lying? That is horrible. You're grounded. Or the dad? Like there's a stench a lot of. And I can smell an evil slut. They never explain it. Like what am I supposed to feel here? You are grounded. Awful. This is the best bath. I don't remember Lucifer taking huge in the Bible, but that doesn't mean he didn't in some, you know, apocrypha writings. I hope you're not using the toilet, it's broken. Huh? And then Mika comes to visit. The movie's like, oh right, he dies in 60 days. What a legacy he's left behind. If I get murdered by my demon girlfriend, I'd prefer if my cameo appearance in a prequel crime was introduced with, Jordan made some really funny videos and lots of people really enjoyed being subscribed to his Patreon, which helped pay for his three children's food. I'm just spitballing. We also learned that this handheld camera is the origin story for Mika's fascination with handheld cameras. I might definitely start to replace my girlfriend with this camera. Finally, the question has been answered. I'm definitely getting one of these. Have you ever had a dream? Also, Daddy apparently runs at least one Burger King. I don't own like every Burger King. <laughs> and yet he is not the Burger King. He's not actually the king of Burger King. <laughs> That's why their house is, is so nice, I guess. Man, I need to hostile take over an Arby's or something. A pack of wild dogs took over and successfully ran to Wendy's. But no time for that. There's more horror. Christy hears something and then she looks around, but she finds nothing. Oh wait, no, the baby mobile spins a little bit. <laughs> Twisted. And later that night, the kid maybe waves at something because the real monster in this movie is being kind to others, even if they're of a different plane of existence than us. Wow, movie. Making a mountain animal. The next day, they find the infamous Katie as a kid photo, but it's not burned yet. And they're like, whoa. I thought we lost all our pictures in the fire. And then maybe the mirror does something. Whoa, whoa. And Martina's like, this is too much for me. I'm gonna spray candle gas everywhere. And Daddy's like, what the hell, bitch? Candles smell like shit to me. Think you're so smart, huh, bitch? I work at a Burger King, so I want my house to smell like chicken fries at all times. And he full on fires her ass. And this makes Allie sad. It wasn't what she, she well, was, was it wasn't bad. hurting anybody. But he cheers her up by showing her that he figured out the night vision settings on his handheld camera. Check this out. <laughs> Dad, you ruined that woman's life. And he's like, yeah, but check this shit out. <laughs> I can see you in the dark. Windows open. Doors open. My bowels open. Oh my God. From fear. See, disgusting. And also Burger King. Whopper. I'm gonna throw up. A drunk bird DUIs into the window. When a pan falls in the kitchen. Twice. God, these people are so brave. What a brave family. They're like the toaster, but a family. Well, 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 how do we escape? Later, a pan immolates itself in protest of this boring ass movie. An imperialist daddy chucks it in the pool. I protest. Where he sees Allie getting raisin fingered by her boyfriend. Brand. And I always said goodnight, Brand. 
that's a, that's a sentence that will never be written ever again. This is a radioactive sentence. Ryan, I don't what does a raisin fingered mean? Well, they were in the hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> so his fingers are probably... You know how they get raisiny? I was thinking that raisin man from the... <laughs> yeah, he was in there. He's playing the saxophone. I've always said good night, Pat. <laughs> as far as I can tell, Allie never gets in trouble for this event, which is probably why they're being haunted by a demon, because demons hate raisin fingerings. <laughs> Also, the pool cleaner escapes the pool a lot, which is scary because pool cleaners are not supposed to escape the pool. That's their home. <laughs> are you too good for your home? <laughs> okay, what else? Uh, the dog is on edge. And the hot tub is like way too hot. Oh, it almost burns off daddy's dick. Are you okay? <laughs> Rub some peanut butter on it, quick! I got peanut butter on my penis. Uh. <laughs> and despite his mangled bits, Daddy takes Mommy on a date, leaving Hunter with Allie, who immediately invites Brad over to do some Ouija. And it turns out that the demon wants what everybody wants. P U S S. Oh, it spells. What's that? Oh, it spells. John C. <laughs> And I mean, yeah, look, while she sleeps, her crotch is attacked by a shadow. That's why I always sleep in a vacuum sealed jock strap. That, and because sometimes Dave escapes from the basement at night. You can never be too careful. Hey? Allie hears a noise <laughs> and goes outside to see if it's another drunk bird or like a cocaine bear or something, but oops, she gets locked out. She half acidly tries to get back inside. But actually, when the parents return, like two hours later, they can't even find her for a while because she did not try very hard at all to get back in. Could she not go to a neighbor's house and use their phone or break a window or something? Like, you probably shouldn't leave that big-ass kid in there alone for that long. And that's even without him getting dragged around by a demon. I don't know, whatever. Hunter is back in his crib after exploring the house for a while. I mean, is a demon why my daughter used to get out of her crib all the time? That would explain the time that she pooped in it because demon shit bad. And a lot. That's lore. That's canon. <laughs> hey, how much orange juice do they drink in this movie? That's too much juice. Like, are demons for or against orange juice? Are they big on migrant workers' rights? If so, that's just another reason for them to be pissed at this family. Allie is a bit freaked out by all this stuff, so she grabs the home video camera and records her scared thoughts. And what are her scared thoughts? Well, I've had a couple of dreams where my teeth are falling out, which is really weird. That's not weird. She's been having bad dreams, and the internet has told her that she's probably being haunted by a demon and not a ghost. And also, hey, did you know that it has been said that if a human makes a bargain with a demon for wealth, power, or any other benefit, they must forfeit their firstborn male. No, Amish boy. Girl childs are gross, but boy childs are great for demon trades. Wow, hell. Sexist much? Yeah. And hey, what do you know? There hasn't been a boy baby on Christie's side of the family since 1930. Could her great-grandmother have traded a future boy child to make the Great Depression suck less? What if Christie's great-grandmother made a deal with a demon so she could get- An erection? No. Did she invent Rocky Road ice cream, which is no joke named for the Great Depression, as in, yeah, it's a, it's gonna be a Rocky Road up ahead, but at least you can eat my shitty ice cream. You cannot <laughs> eat this ice cream. Everything's fine. Did she trade her boy relative for chunky goodness? Your existence is meaningless without ice cream. Later that night, we get the same establishing shots that we've seen 48 other times, and Allie hears something. I think I just heard something. And she follows a weird toy around because she has the survival instinct of a gazelle running from a lion into a barbecue sauce factory. Can you believe this movie only took three weeks to film? Two of those weeks must have been getting this, this awesome toy shot. Like, how's it moving everywhere? Movie magic. Katie and Christy chat later and Katie is like, I remember you crying. All the time. Stop talking about this demon. God, do you want to end up like mom? I remember that you stopped talking for months. 
I remember weird people came to our house and our mom was upset all the time. And oh boy, I smell another prequel. I hope we keep going further back in time until they just paint the story on a cave wall. Just like 393 sketches of rock doors rolling open of their own accord. Oh my God. Paranormal Activity 77 is going to be about how Jesus' resurrection and the empty grave and the stone rolled away was like a demon thing, isn't it? The body of our Lord was... Mel Gibson to direct. This is gonna be a very controversial film. But for now, we get to watch a woman make tea, pretty much in real time. Even the demon gets bored with this, so he explodes the whole damn kitchen. This scares Christy so much that she cleans the kitchen. Which makes sense, because the only way I get motivated to clean is if a demon haunts me for three weeks and then explodes my kitchen. And yeah, the demon just realized the movie is almost over and he's done basically nothing except shit. Shit, bitch, we all do. So he gives the dog a seizure or something. <laughs> and when Daddy and Allie take her to the vet, the demon just drags Christy all over the place. Up, down, basement. You name it. Drag, drag, drag. The next day, Daddy is is like, look, Christy won't get out of bed, but the Burger King, he must be served at all costs. So Allie, can you please watch Hunter and just make sure your stepmom doesn't do anything crazy. Sweetie! I'll be back once his majesty is satiated with enough burger sales. And she's like, okay. But then she sees a bunch of scratches on the inside of the basement door and a bite mark on Christy's leg. And she's like, I don't like that. No, thank you. Daddy finally returns and Allie shows him the footage of Christy getting dragged and he's like, oh shit. I guess we should call him the big guns. <laughs> and by that, I mean he brings back Martine. <laughs> I hope she's brought a really big ass candle. Ah, dang it. Just a teeny tiny little crucifix. What am I gonna do with this? She's also got a plan to transfer the demon from this family to Katie. Do we tell her? Do we tell no, her? No, we happened? never tell anyone. That is a bitch move. Good grief. Couldn't you transfer it to somebody who really deserves it, like a child murderer or a Dave. But before they can finish we transferring the demon, the power to the house dies and Christy attacks daddy. And everything is chaos control. Eventually daddy heads into the basement and finds Hunter. And also Christy looking real demony. But it's all good because the power comes back on and he puts Christy to bed before burning the edges of Katie's photo, which is, I guess, how you get access to Supernatural Dropbox. I guess he's the one who puts it in her attic and like, nice. I know Mika's been putting it in her attic for like three years. Oh wait, that's the top part. I guess it's more of a basement. A power bottom. I don't know where Mika puts it. They always turn the camera off. Kiss the camera, what do you I'm not kissing the camera. And whatever, that works for a while until the end of the movie when Bloody Katie runs over to their house, snaps Daddy's neck. Kill him now. Explodes Christy with the force. Do it. And then buggers off with Hunter. All this while Allie was on a field trip to Jamestown or some shit. Katie and Hunter still haven't been found. Also, presumably, the Burger King has been left unattended and probably died of hunger. And, uh, just kidding, here are the credits. It was fake again. Well, <laughs> it did happen. It's fiction. I was gonna foot him in, uh, foot, foot. Dave, what in the hell? There are no apologies at the beginning of this movie signifying the end of Paramount pretending that this actually happened, which is pretty lame. I mean, are you telling me that these demon murderings aren't real? Yes. No. Well, there goes Dave's erection. Yeah? Anyway, it's March 2005. Last movie's daddy films Christy as they prepare the nursery for big ass baby Hunter. And Katie comes over and is like, yo, can I dump some crap in your new basement of your new house? And they're like, I guess. I have a couple of boxes in my car that I would love to throw in your basement. 
is the true face of evil. So Katie dumps a ton of old VHS tapes down there and she's like, I inherited these from Grandma Lois. Hello what? there. Ooh. Anyway, bye. And apparently when the house was ransacked last movie, the demon ransacker or who or whatever it was, basically only took those VHS tapes which were not mentioned until now. I've gotta return some video tapes. Looks like that's the only thing that's missing. Hey, let's watch one of those. Time traveling noises. People I don't remember. Of September 3rd, 1988. It's been years. Young Katie celebrates a birthday with some cake that she doesn't really seem to like. I don't want it. Not as much as she doesn't like this pinata, I mean. <laughs> this demon was a pinata, it'd be a big trouble. Oh, hey, the aforementioned Grandma Lois is here. It's Grandma. Oh, hello, Lois. And this whole thing is filmed by Dennis, the new boyfriend, maybe, of Katie's mom, Julie. That's something, uh, you have to work certain parts of your wet ass P word. Since the original dad has left the family for unknown, probably demon related, or Burger King related reasons. You can f this burger. I wonder why it's like three movies in a row feature couples that aren't on their first marriages. It doesn't necessarily matter. It's just sort of a weird thing to keep going back to. So my ex-wife is. Although, to their credit, for the first time ever, the dude doesn't have some sick job, and their house primarily comes from the lady part of the relationship. She probably bought Burger King stock or something. Your balls will explode, guaranteed. Grandma doesn't love this wet ass part of Dennis, the, the poor part specifically. He doesn't have any money. But love conquers all, except probably demons. Demon. Julie seems to be a stay at home mom, despite the fact that she could be a dentist, as Christy points out. You're gonna get a new d job as a dentist. You have a talent for causing pain. And also, does Christy have a feeling? Seems weird, right? She's like five. <gasps> You should floss him. Well, it's not as weird as her imaginary friend Toby, who they don't think is real, but I bet is at least a little bit real. Yes, he is. No way. So now Dennis is in the basement waiting for his assistant, Randy. My assistant, Randy, is currently 43 minutes late. Randy is a three course meal. Together they do wedding videos, and also I guess they prank each other with like a bowl of milk or something on the ceiling when one of them is late. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. Put him in a uh, foot. They have fun. That is fun. <laughs> they also have footage of boobies. <laughs> hey, what if we combine spilled milk and cleavage? Dave, write this down. We're gonna be millionaires. I am delivered. I don't like men no more. Later, Dennis hears some slams or something. A big show with a. Julie? So he grabs his camera in case it's Bigfoot or something equally improbable, like a good movie in this franchise. Terminal Bird. And there's actually no real explanation for why he's filming all these random things yet, except for like the birthday party, but whatever. What he finds is both a singing toy bear and a weird mini closet crawl space. Well, good thing he brought the camera. Maybe he thinks the bear is going to marry somebody in there? Keep watching to find out. <laughs> Later that night, Dennis gets Julie to smoke pot <coughs> and does what every man with a camera has done since the beginning of time and also this franchise and asked Julie if they can make a sex tape. Is that perverted? Yeah. <laughs> I wrote they can make a sex time. Hey baby, you wanna make a sex time? Yes. No. And she actually agrees. Really? Of course, she's pretty distracted and before they can get all their holes out, they're hit with an earthquake. Which, on the one hand, makes uh, aiming private parts extremely difficult, but on the other hand, earthquakes in many cultures are known as nature's vibrators. That's how they did it on the Flintstones. Ah. But maybe it's for the best that they didn't have sex because the footage later reveals a ghost, or more likely a demon, was standing there the whole time watching them. Gross! Yeah. I mean, look, he got dust all over his invisible boner. Ew. Ew. Another tweak on the classic paranormal activity formula as Dennis is the one who thinks the demon is real, and the girl part of the relationship is like, nah, dog, you're stupid. The only ghost watching us have sex is the Holy Ghost, and he is not happy. You f***ed up. Dennis then films Julie shitting. Oh, sorry, sorry. Which makes me think, maybe she's a demon? Because I thought shitting was their thing? <laughs> Either way, Dennis is like, I'm gonna set up two cameras to film literally everything all day long, every single day, even though I have to swap out the VHS tapes every six hours to see if I can find any more evidence of this horny, invisible intruder. Yeah, crazy horny. No, it's, it's totally 
totally normal. And Julia's like, whatever, honey. If I say no, there'll be a no movie. So knock yourself out, big guy. Who, by the way, he was in this sketch. It's totes the best Honcal for you. Honcal? Every guy should have a knowledge of it. Huh? It's kind of funny. Yes. Now, please, trying to concentrate. I um shared a bagel with the uh... John C. <laughs> Young Christy then talks to Toby on camera, which is weird. And when pressed on it later, Christy confirms that Toby is old. He's old like grandma. I'm He's so old. And tall. He's tall. I'm so tall! And will get her in trouble. And I think she's just describing Santa Claus, right? <laughs> I mean, that's not so bad. As long as you're not a mercenary. <laughs> She also asked the important question that we should be asking every character in these films. Wait, why are you filming this? Um, later, Randy happens to be in the house when Dennis hears something, so the two of them together get the absolute shit scared out of them by Julie pulling a pranky. <laughs> And I'll admit, this is the first and only time the series actually got me. I almost demon shat my pants. Oh my god, I see demons! That night, or some <laughs> night, because let's be honest, I'm not keeping track of which night is which, the girls camp in the backyard, but the lights flicker, and a door closes, and Dennis, thinking quickly, grabs the camera, Selfie. and runs into the backyard to confirm that, yeah, they're in the tent still. What the hell is even that? Daddy, chill. Well, first he confirms that they're not in their beds, which they weren't supposed to be anyway. But I guess that's still true, which is reassuring in its own way. Totally. Another night, probably, Dennis sees a swinging light. <laughs> and hears some sounds. One, two, three, one, two, three. Then he dicks around with the blinds a bunch. <laughs> And so the next day, he and Randy rig a third camera onto an oscillating fan for extra gimmick horror potential. And what does it see? A kid running around and, and messing with lights. Sick. This proves that the real monster in these movies are children. Ew, 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 ew. Which is also true for any movie with children, and also children in general. Suck brick, kid! Except for my children, they're a delight. I haven't seen them in six months because I've been making these videos. Please subscribe to my Patreon before I forget all their names. <laughs> Your dad. Randy steals some demon books for Dennis from the library because I actually don't know why he steals them. Oh uh, yeah, I guess you just pick it up. Feels like if there's one kind of book that you shouldn't steal, it's a demon book, but whatever. Dennis learns that kids are particularly susceptible to spiritual contact and also demons feed off fear. Oh, delicious. Even though I thought they fed off Burger King. <laughs> I'm getting really confused with the lore of these movies. Only at Burger King you can stick your demons in this boy's hole. Ah! I feel like you're saying boy's hole, and it's clearly soul. Ah, oh, they probably taste the same. Christy and Katie play Bloody Mary, and nothing really happens unless you consider a demon closing a door once they've left the bathroom. Something, which I do not. Nothing has even happened. No way. Man, how unfortunate is it for these demons that they're bounded by the physical world, at least in the door sense? Like, they always have to open and close doors. They apparently can't phase through them. And also, I guess they've got an innate sense of manners because they're always closing doors behind themselves. Etiquette is important, Liz, even when they can't see you. Granted, they sort of slam them a little too loud, which is a little rude, but at least they don't just leave them ajar. No! Jar! Wait, demons feeding on a human emotion, messing with doors. Do you think that these movies started as a horror version of Monsters, Inc.? Yes. No. The scary parts of Monsters, Inc. are scarier than the scary parts of Paranormal Activity most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, but maybe. Whatever. New night. Mom up late eating. Ball swing, ball bright. First ball to explode tonight. Assuming this isn't a uh, post-coital snack. Oh. <laughs> The next day, Katie gets locked in Toby's hole for a couple minutes. Yeah? Um, phrasing? Toby! And then that night, a sexy 80s babysitter shows up, which is never good news in a horror movie. The babysitter is asked to tell a ghost story, but instead just throws on a bed sheet and tickles a bunch, which is decidedly not a story. <laughs> That's closer to porn than film, sexy babysitter. Oh my god, she's hot. I have to go hug her hello. Keep it together. I can't. I'm gonna make a scene. Speaking of, she twice says hello to Dennis in his cameras. Hello, Dennis. Hi, Dennis. Which suggests that Dennis might be making some extracurricular sexy tapes of his own. Hey, dude. Mm -hmm. What's up? 
You didn't see that, right? The bed sheet sneaks up on the babysitter and also Toby's whole farts right in her face. <laughs> Freaky stuff, man. Hey, look, here's Christy on a counter and jumping off a really high railing, but, but it's fine because Toby catches her, I guess. And you know, the first two movies sure made it sound like Katie was the one getting haunted and Christy mostly was just crying and getting freaked out all the time. But it's pretty clear that Christy is not only the main character here, but she's having like a blast. I mean, look how much fun she's having staring at her mother and her mother's lover for hours on end. Man, the 80s were great. <laughs> she's jumping off of balconies and being caught by a demon. That sounds Awesome. Can you take me she like has tea parties with the demon. I'm like, what are you not having fun with? You see the hat? I am Mrs. You're the devil. <laughs> Unfortunately, she overdid it with the demon playtime. me. So now they need to take sick Christy to the doctor and Randy comes over to watch Katie. Um, no. I'm sure Randy's a good guy. And I know there are cameras everywhere. Well, not everywhere. Oh, sorry. But like, I feel uncomfortable with boy babysitters watching just one girl. But Randy goes out of his way to make sure it's not weird by grabbing a camera. Sorry, Dennis. Not my idea. And hanging out in the bathroom with Katie with all the lights turned off. Okay, let's do it. It seems like there's still light coming in from under the door. I see you still thinking that's weird, Dave, but they're also playing Bloody Mary to hopefully freak themselves out and get their blood and hormones pumping. I like cuddling and spooning and she likes videotaping us during sex. Oh my God. It, it's, it, it's a totally normal thing to do with other people's children, except mine, Dave. The normal thing to do with mine is to contribute to my Patreon so Dave doesn't have to babysit anymore because I'm terrified. Wait, are we supposed to shake this baby? <laughs> Unfortunately, despite the totally fine normalcy of their unlit bathroom games, Toby feels super left out and he claws Randy and also he explodes a tea party and Randy's like, okay, that's it. I quit. These wedding videos are getting very weird. <laughs> decides now, I guess, to come clean to Julie about all the things he's learned from his stolen demon books. And he also films it because he films everything for some reason. Oh my god. He says, okay, so in the 1930s, there were these witches' covens that brainwashed girls into giving birth to sons and then brainwashing them so that they'd forget all about the sons. And also then the witches would take the sons and also they had a pretty clear brand logo. And wouldn't you know it, that logo is also upstairs in Toby's hole. And Julie is like, shut up. I hate you, Dennis. You're dumb. You don't know shit about shit. I'm not listening to And while she says all that, Aww. invisible Toby grabs Katie by the hair and shakes her around. Your hair is, um, in the hopes that a baby boy falls out. I, maybe a whopper. I'm, I'm losing the, the lore. I drift in and out. And when Katie comes downstairs and is like, my hair got tugged by Satan himself, Julia's like, see, this is your fault, Dennis. This is your fault. <laughs> okay, this is exactly what I'm talking about. I, I didn't, anyway, during a night, Toby thoughtfully turns on the TV to white noise static to help Julie sleep while he heads to the girl's room to put his brand logo on the computer or whatever and absolutely explode the room and drag Katie around in the apparent hopes of giving her wicked rug burn. Ladies, any rug burn back? And he also knocks over a teddy bear. Uh, Toby only stops when Christy agrees to do something. I'll do it! Just let her go! The next day, Christy is like, Mom, can we go to Grandma's? And Julie's like, I'd rather be dead. But then Satan lifts all of her kitchen in the air and drops it on the ground. She's like, well, I hate housework. Let's just go to Grandma's. You can all go straight to Grandma. Side note, three movies in, we really have a lot of demon evidence. And I realize that we're kind of backfilling it since we're always going back in time. I just think it's weird that the demon is so completely caught on camera and yet nobody's doing anything about it besides, I guess, Paramount Pictures. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Yeah. I realize it's mostly affecting small families that get massacred, but surely somebody is watching this footage. I thought the universal rule of finding a stranger's VHS tapes in the 1980s was calling in all your buddies so you can watch what is most likely porn together and then deepening your bonds while you all come of age together. Sure. Whatever. Now we're at grandma's eating pie because grandma's love pie and Christy pretends to marry Toby until Julie shuts that shit down. So who's the lucky guy? His name is Toby. I don't want to hear Toby's name ever again. You probably will. But later that night, unmarried and living in sin, Julie and Dennis crawl into their 1950s sitcom separate twin beds, but for only like two seconds, because this is the sexy sinful 80s, and they get one tiny little bed, and it's not long before they hear grandma dicking around. 
Julie goes to check, and when she doesn't immediately return, Dennis grabs his camera to go see if he can grab some footage of a confused, naked old woman. Is that normal? Totally normal. I mean, I assume. I don't know what else he's hoping to film. Nipples, Mac. Uh, nipples. Turns out the girls are gone too, and he's like, WTF? But then he finds a bunch of Satan drawings on the walls and a bunch of creepy, confused old women that are unfortunately fully clothed. So he runs away with his flaccid member of flapping, but finds Julie sort of suspended in the air. And then she knocks them both down the stairs, and then he and Christy hide in the closet for a while after Dennis grabs the ever important camera because man is still hoping for a chance for that $10,000 from America's most pants insane home videos. Oh my god, I see demons! And then he sees Katie. Katie! So he goes to check on her, but there's a bonfire outside, and Katie gets all demon y and force blasts him. Do it. <laughs> And then Grandma shows up, and then Dennis somehow gets magically folded in half like a taco. Here's what we'll do. On the count of four, ready, one! And then Grandma and the girls head upstairs to, I don't know, play with action figures or something. They're all pretty chill about it. And we immediately get credits because we're not even trying to pretend that any of this happened at this point. And okay, let's back up for a second. These are the events that Katie would later describe as a shadow standing at the foot of her bed. I would see the, I guess you'd call it like the, like just a mask, like the shadowy just... Figure. There is a lot of evidence of her mom's boyfriend getting haunted and murdered. Like, what the hell did they think happened to him? Also, what happened to their mom exactly in their minds? Like, they don't want to end up like their mom. But what is their mom? Except maybe she fell down the steps at grandma's house? You need to ignore it, but you're gonna end up just like mom. Do you understand me? She hasn't been weird this whole movie. Does she get up later and is weird? And also, something like this happens again when Katie is 13? What are the odds? I know. This feels much crazier than whatever Katie and her sister were talking about. <laughs> you remember that time mom was possessed and thrown down some stairs at grandma's house while her illicit lover was folded up like a taco? Pizza? Now that's what I call a taco. I remember that time very unfavorably. I remember you crying. All the time. I don't remember anything. <laughs> I think a demon took my scraper, Dave. Just like a quick, like a quick booby. Just a quick booby. Okay, let's recap. Begin! Katie took Hunter from the second movie, and now their whereabouts are like the origins of the random stains I keep finding on my pants. Unknown. But also, probably not good. That's come, innit? Yes. No. And now that we're all caught up on that, check out this friggin' ninja! Ah! Wow! You know, running laps. <laughs> It's Halloween 2011, and this blonde girl named Alex is the ninja named Wyatt's sister, and they're being filmed by a friend named Ben. Now that's a name. Who struggles with bowel irritability. Ah! Oh, I just shit my pants. He also struggles with being just the saddest bank robber. Um, thanks. See you later. Not a bank robber. Alex has a hot mom and a hot dad who once tried to steal a mummy's gold with, let's say, limited success. He was in The Mummy. And then he died after making this movie. That's shocking. Demons, probably. Demon. He was killed by a demon in that movie. Is he a demon? The Mummy's not a demon. He's just a mummy, I guess. It has, how does that work? But it's, it's like, like a religious thing. It's technically, it would be like a... Three hours later. Anyway, Alex changes into a skimpy fairy outfit to go to a dance, and then presumably changes into a skimpy something else to film Wyatt playing soccer. Like, is Wyatt famous? Why are multiple people filming his every move? Like, by contrast, this weird kid standing off to the side appears to have nobody filming him. Sucks to suck. Speaking of, Dad missed the game, but he did bring cupcakes, which feels like a win to me, even if the mom seems to disagree. Ugh, women, am I right? Right? Yeah, I guess you're right. Always refusing to substitute family bonding for baked goods. Cake's good and all, but I'd rather eat Diane's butt! Daryl! Did you score? No. All right, hey, it's okay. Later, Ben fully breaks into Alex's house so they can throw a raging middle school party complete with palatal expanders and Xbox Connect games. Why didn't you just say that at the beginning? That's what I'm saying! <laughs> Ah oh, man, I bet somebody sold their soul to a demon for some Connect games. I mean, Connect was so tight. So tight. Like, look how tight it looks in night vision with all of its futuristic laser spots. Man, I hope this entire movie involves an Xbox Connect in some way. Your wish is granted. Ben chases Alex around, clearly trying to bust a move. Show me a move. And or a nut. And does uh, she not think it's weird that he's filming all of this? 
Ben. My guy, put down the camera. If you succeed, you're gonna have a crime on tape in like 35 states. And he comes. Believe it or not, in jail right away. You're middle schoolers. You think Dave isn't gonna trace this footage down and find out where you live? I'll be careful. Think again. You'll be dead. The next day, the weird kid slips into their backyard playhouse, which isn't a euphemism, but rather a statement of fact. These are good facts. Although Ben believes that this boy has blocked his cock. Oh, thanks for cock blocking me. Yikes. Which is a euphemism for what it's like whenever I go anywhere with Dave. F you, Dave. Uh, you're my worst friend. You know what would make up for it, though? Just a quick booby. God, you're so needy. Hey, I know they're kids. And kids are stupid. Man, we are really sexualizing this middle schooler quite a bit out the... Oh, no. Are we demonetized again? Uh, Dave, run, the cops. Right to jail. Oh, that was apparently just in the movie. <laughs> apparently Robbie's mom is in the hospital, so weird ass Robbie will now be hanging out with Wyatt for a while, which is actually a great opportunity to boost his Q score. And Alex is like, God, this small child that I'm constantly filming is so weird. Like, check out my hours and hours of footage that I have filmed without his consent. Doesn't he seem weird? The socks with the sandals is my favorite part. <laughs> I'm normal for filming him a ton, just forever. Oh my god, I love this kid. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. And, and like, what makes him so weird exactly? His fork that tells the future? Um, it tells the future. Oh. Dave's got a spoon that tells if he ate corn the night before. Cutlery can be used for all sorts of things, Alex. So why don't you grab a spork and eat my entire ass? But it sounds complicated. Oh, it's easy. I'll teach you, okay? Okay. Careful. <laughs> Oh look, there the weird kid goes. Let's hold this shot forever. Perfect. We're already demonetized, so hey, Hello. speaking of sexy middle schoolers and crimes, it turns out that Ben records every single video chat that he and Alex have, secretly, including the chats they have where she just falls asleep for hours. I just want you to know that this is something that my computer does. So when I show you this, don't like freak out. Necrophilia is not my thing. She sort of just brushes this off, but like, mm -hmm. don't? Oh, gee, I never thought of it like that. People shouldn't film you when you sleep, mm -hmm. Dave. What? Oh. Nor should they, like Robbie, come in your bed, mm -hmm. Dave. I think it was really creepy that he came in my bed. Man, these boys be Alex crazy. They must have just used the future fork to watch Ant-Man 3 because, man, everybody loves that movie. Hey. Or they would have if Ant-Man crawled inside Kang's butthole and expanded real fast. You remember when that joke was everywhere? Remember how we kept talking about Paul Rudd crawling inside of Thanos' butthole and exploding him? Think about that every day. I am coming. Anyway, Robbie has an invisible friend named Toby. Huh, I guess that means that that's literally just the demon's name. Now that's a name. I mean, he's used it twice now, so clearly kids aren't just mishearing him. The actual demon's name actually is Toby. Uh, you know, I can't do it. Toby is the worst. And he actually plays a connect. Is that what Toby looks like? <laughs> this must be why he's tormenting all these people. Friggin' dork probably got laughed out of hell. Get out of here. Get the hell out of here. Anyway, Alex freaks Wyatt out with an age-inappropriate YouTube video that hopefully isn't one of my age-inappropriate YouTube videos, but Robbie, he seems unfazed. He's seen some shit. That was real. Wyatt books it, but then Alex hears something and wanders around to inspect, but mostly just finds that classic Max screensaver and also her mom. Oh. oh no, 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 no. She's hot. Okay. Begin the night countdown that doesn't make any sense to use anymore because we're no longer pretending this is police footage or whatever. Oop. Alex hears a noise again, and Robbie crawls out of bed for a little midnight connect action. Mommy, daddy, sheep monster. I mean, you can't blame him for that. I mean, have you ever played Space Warlord Organ Trading Simulator? No. Because if you're watching this video, you clearly haven't. You're correct. Otherwise, you'd be out there jamming with your Kinect just trading organs and sh**. Uh, that makes sense. Seismic Blast! <laughs> You know, one of the most thrilling things about these movies is that every time something even slightly interesting happens, or even something not even slightly interesting happens, we almost always cut to a scene of somebody bootleg filming their computer screen and being like, look my parent or friend or lover at this slightly interesting thing that the audience just saw. Isn't that wild? Do you see that? What the f 
course not. And the response is always like, yes, it is wild, but I assume that is not a demon. Well, see you later when the knights get into the teens and we escalate from opening and closing doors to straight throwing shit around. What is that? That is awesome. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. I can't even work my cell phone and you guys are like, what? Amazing. Does he think that's fake? That night, Alex chats with Ben, but there's lag, so she gets closer and closer to the screen, which is about as useful as speaking louder at a non-native speaker of your language. Ben, I, I can't hear you. Ah, uh, mi comida favorita es una ropa vieja con tamales con tostones. What? And whoops! Ben actually has snuck up behind her, which I think if I were her parents, I would beat the shit out of Ben, at least a little bit. She's like 13, dude. Get out of her room at night. And uh, when you know who is in here, door open. Got it? Okay, good rule, mom. Get the out of here. What? Now. Oh, okay. Yes. Ben is like, hey, why don't we rig everybody's laptops to spy on them since I'm really, I'm really trying to see if they'll actually send me to juvenile detention. This is gonna be huge. And Alex is like, tight, let's do it. Password, odd Robbie, right? I thought it was Big Ben. You don't need a password for that, right? First thing they catch is Daddy just pounding Coronas. And then they catch Robbie walking around with Wyatt. And both of those things are probably fun for their participants, but were not very fun for me to watch. Sort of like almost every single thing this demon does. God, everybody in these movies just loves juice. We get it. You're rich. You can afford juice. Go easy on the orange juice. That stuff doesn't grow on... Wait, it does. Oh, sh a ball rolls down the stairs, and then there's a slam. Damn, if this isn't just the drunkest ass demon ever to escape the fires of hell, like, what is he slamming into all the goddamn time? The life of a Silver Smith's apprentice was not an easy one. Ah! Are his legs invisible even to himself? And he's just obliterating his shins into coffee tables for 15 nights in a row every few years until he snaps and murders everybody? Guilty. <laughs> it's like... Every time you have a movie with a haunting, it's always like, F oh my god, like, what was that? And it's like a demon just like, <laughs> god, <laughs> drunk ass jokes. Yeah, oh, it's like knocking tea parties over and shit. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm so drunk. <laughs> oh my god, last night was crazy. He's like opening the covers and closing them, yeah. looking for like hot pockets and <laughs> Keep them full with Hot Pockets. <laughs> it's like, why does he take so long and why is he so conspicuous? Ah, oh, man, I, th I think I'm supposed to do something, but I damn if I remember. Anyway, I'm going to go play Connect. <laughs> How are you doing that? The demon has lined up a bunch of toys leaning into Wyatt's closet and there are noises and a chandelier crashes. <laughs> yeah, confirmed. This is the drunkest demon yet. Like, what is he doing? Just jacking it. In 15 minutes, we're gonna find a demon-shaped hole in the drywall when he slips on a toy train. <laughs> oh, also Robbie was in the house during this. Robbie, you guys are like you want to go. It is not Jesus. Does he cause these things, or is he just here for the connect? We would like to. Duh. I don't know, but across the street at Robbie's house later that night, there are a bunch of people and cars and also a woman, and are they witches? Probably. Hi, can I help you? Whoa, she turned me into a newt! I assume every gathering of four women or more is a coven, which is why I always carry a bucket of water with me to throw groups of women. You gotta be safe out there. The next day, Wyatt tries to wheel around in his little bike, but Toby keeps pulling chairs in front of him. This is nothing compared to the twig of 93. So Robbie is like, how about instead we just go into your closet and I draw some satanic symbols on your body and we talk to Toby together. And Wyatt's like, yeah. Jesus. But once Alex notices that Robbie or somebody has drawn a satanic symbol in the sandbox, presumably to cover up the fact that he's like demon sh in there. I just shit my drawers. This it obviously means something. Yeah, it's sh She's like, that's it. I am Googling demon symbols just like every character in every other modern horror movie. How else are you gonna do it? Like, say you're being stalked by some unspeakable horror from the very pit of hell again for the fourth time named Toby. You could cleverly observe the monster's attack methods or analyze similarities between how it chooses to manifest, then build a viable strategy, or you could just Google it. Look, that's, that's 
close to it. It might be literally the single most boring and basic way to solve a problem, but at least if you accidentally click on one of those 7,000 ads pretending to be an actual answer, you'll make King Google just a little bit richer. Render therefore unto Google. Now, the idea of researching your otherworldly nemesis isn't a new trope by any means. I mean, even in this series, Paranormal 1 and 3 had them reading demon books, and there were some light Googling elements in 1 and 2, and hundreds of other horror movies take detours to the library to check out a bunch of ancient tomes on some specific prehistorical prophecy or Celtic lore that offers some exposition on the monster that's devouring the town's horniest teens. I better read it fast before someone tries to take it from me. I still feel like that's fine, though, because there's still something tactile about thumbing through dusty old books and newspaper microprints, and it's also a slow enough process that the library itself can often become a target location for an attack. <laughs> But in modern movies like the Elm Street remake or basically every Final Destination, they don't do much more than flip open a laptop. Okay. In Elm Street, the character gets so bored, they literally fall asleep. And after the fourth straight movie where Final Destination characters Google, that time Devin Sawa survived a plane crash only to be killed by a loose brick off screen, I seriously considered crashing a log truck into New Line Cinema's house. And I knew that this was possible only through a cleansing fire. <laughs> Even random monster movies like the recent Godzilla King of Monsters grind to a halt so a submarine lady can inform everybody that her Google foo revealed that yeah, there are some monsters. All the legends, the stories, they're true. Well, I don't know what I expected. And surprisingly, they're kind of old. I'm so old. Apparently Godzilla wasn't pooped out like three years ago. Good. We're learning. This is yet another reason why It Follows is so great. There's literally no information on what the hell this monster is or what's going on, so the characters piece together a wet defense strategy based solely on observation and logic. That's a lot cooler than watching Micah Monroe Google tall boy sex monster house stop. Um, you all don't like that dude. But anyway, what Alex learns is that the symbol somehow prepares people for demonic possession somehow, but they're deaf gonna need to murder a virgin first before that happens. I had sex last night. But he really didn't. Yes, I did. And Ben helpfully offers to ensure that Alex can't be a target, but she declines. Just run upstairs real quick. Ben. Stop. We will never come. Is it weird that four movies in, the basic lore here can be summed up as maybe Katie's great something grandma in the 1930s or so, maybe sold their soul to the devil to be rich, and now they're being haunted until they can find a boy baby, and also there's maybe a coven of witches that help demons out, and maybe they need a virgin to get the devil into the boy baby? What you say? Makes sense. It's not a very coherent, nor original, bit of lore. Ah, oh, they probably taste the same. It feels like at some point they'll want to actually sort of get into the nitty gritty of what the hell is going on. I mean, you can only show so many doors opening of their own accord before you actually want to learn why. They're not just stabbing everybody to death with their own raisin fingers or something gnarlier. Is that an option? But until then, maybe I can satiate you with a mommy boob shot. Mm -hmm. Just like a, just like a quick, like a quick booby. Just a quick booby. She tries to cut some peppers, but the demon steals her knife? So she has to get another knife? Oh, that sick bastard. What the f did I do? Leave these poor people alone. Oh God, a book falls? Oh God, twice? It's funny that like also the book like always falls right in front of where the camera is. Like presumably they have a library shelf, but he's like, ooh, yes, got it. It's like Interstellar. Matthew McConaughey is like trying to teach her how to build a rocket ship, and they think it's a demon. They're <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not a demon. I'm Matthew McConaughey. I'm trying to tell her how to build a rocket ship. You're stuck in a black hole, you idiot. Don't let me leave, Mer. It's me, Mer. Later, the mom leaves to maybe go buy another knife, and she's like, "Be good, six-year-olds," as if they're not definitely going to immediately begin communing with a demon as soon as she leaves. How quickly we forget what it's like to be six and communing with a demon with your best buddy. And yeah, what do you know? They immediately run across the street to Robbie's house, where they'll presumably get a better demon signal. Alex chases them and finds everything in the house covered in American Psycho murder tarps, and also that Katie is Robbie's mom. Hello. Does that make Robbie Hunter? Unclear. Well, stay tuned to find out. I'm not so sure we will. The next big ass crazy thing that happens is Daddy hears the laptop go brr. And he goes over to it. And he's like, why laptop go brr? 
And then the demon gives back the knife. And the mom is like, come back to bed, even though we've been told earlier that they are no longer physical in their relationship. I'm sorry, okay? And also, he didn't come from the bed. He came from the couch. I grow tired of eavesdropping and masturbating to the sounds you all make. Jesus Christ, all right, could, could use a little more mystery. Man, there are so many crazy things going on. We learned that Robbie is adopted and also Wyatt is adopted. And like, am I adopted? I mean, Dave's ad Oh, did you not know that, Dave? Did you not know you're adopted? Stop crying. Sorry. It turns out that Wyatt is Hunter, I guess. And Toby is like, your family needs you back, my guy. Name's not Hunter. And then get this, a couple of doors open. But how? Nobody appears to touch them. No touching! No touching! No touching! No touching! No what is going on? Okay, is the demon literally inside of the connect? Is there nowhere else that they could talk to him? They go to the connect every time they want to talk to the demon. Mountain Dew is the best soda ever made. No, it's not. And oh look, here's a freaky connect boy in the lasers. Let's go watch a movie in the tub and then get dragged under the water for I think literally an hour. <laughs> Perfect. One hour later. I feel like it'd be hard to hold your breath for that long, but Wyatt seems fine. And remember, he is both a ninja and a soccer player. Such athleticism! That night, the mom literally drugs Alex with sleeping pills because sometimes you just need a break. My sleeping pills. You know? What? I gave my oldest heroin last week and I have never been more productive. Wyatt is not drugged though, so he be dickin' and oh shit, even more doors open. Also, this Michael Myers-esque pervert just stands there and watches the demon uncover and pick up his sister. He better not start clowning or I'm gonna impale my eyes with a fork that sees the future. I'm trash. But that's the end of that scene and it's wild how four movies into this series and they're still willing to go slow as shit. You'd think they'd pick up the pace with the sequels and start adding explosions or actual gore or something, but no, just... <laughs> Yeah. Just people walking around. Speaking of, hey look, here's Katie. But uh-oh. Alex has garage door problems. Can you see it? So she hangs up on a chat with Ben and literally says TTYL, IRL, LOL, BRB, AFK, ASL. Okay, TTYL. But then all the doors lock as the ghost tries to midsummer her. But it's all good because she breaks into the car and slams it into the garage door while Katie tries to get Hunter slash Wyatt to come with her, but he does not. And the next day, Dad is like, hey, do you want to get dinner, Alex? You know, maybe we could talk and you could maybe further explain why you obliterated the car in the garage. And she's like, God, Dad, it's because you're not listening to me when I tell you that a demon made me do it. And he's like, no, for real, let's grab some chicken fries and talk about it. And she's like, fine. But while they're gone, Katie returns to wander around at a Michael Myers-esque glacial pace and more books fall right in front of the camera again to scare the mom and it's definitely scarier the second time we watch it. Thank God they didn't come up with a different scare. I don't think I could handle anything scarier than books. They might appreciate a gift of literature. Then the mom gets exploded and killed, I guess. So Katie hides her body and then Ben shows up uninvited so Katie snaps his neck and hides his body. But what is the point of hiding these bodies? She's not like hiding them well, as evidenced by Alex immediately finding Ben when she gets home. Like, what does she need, a 30 second head start? Ben? Well, maybe because she's finally convinced Wyatt to come over to her house. Stranger danger. Wait, wait, wait. And after Ben's body blasts her backwards with the apparent remnants of those blue balls of his, yeah. Alex grabs the camera and runs across the street to film her dad getting blasted in a bad way. <laughs> And then Katie goes full demon mode. And then there's like a like hundred witches. And I guess they kill her. I mean, that's what she gets for being a virgin, I guess. Yeah. Me and my witch friends did the exact same thing to Dave last week. It's his fault for being so focused on work. Virginity is gay. Wait, who the hell is Robbie? Who are any of us? If he's not Hunter, is he just another kid that Katie stole at some point? Or is that like Mika's kid? Is he a witch? We literally never find out. Robbie's just a weird kid. You know how there are weird kids? Totally. <laughs> That's Robbie. We will, we will. Duh. I think this demon gave me power.
really feel like I should remember this. Wow. Okay. So I guess they listened to my complaints in the first half of this video and went hard trying to address them. Now I know. Change isn't always easy. Yeah. This movie is sequely as shit. Started with just a straight up Paramount production stinger. No dickin'. This is a film, baby. A crazy film with production stinger glitches. Oh shit. Cut from there to a high school valedictorian and giggling and 2012 and a happy Hispanic family throwing a huge party for their recently graduated son Jesse and his buddy Hector and another cuter buddy named Marisol. And Dave, this is way more fun looking than the barbecue that you guys threw when we graduated from high school. I just wish you guys would put in a little more effort. <laughs> Dude, we had bowling ball, though. We did. It was actually pretty sweet. <laughs> but still, it pales in comparison to the Hispanic one. <laughs> I'm just saying, why couldn't you guys have made it more like Paranormal Activity colon the marked ones? I know the movie came out five years after we graduated, but I don't see how that's an excuse. You could have just used a demon time travel door or something. Oops, am I spoiling this film? I don't want to talk about time travel shit. That's too damn bad. To explain the use of a handheld camera this time, Jesse's dad maybe rents a camera or something to film the graduation, and Jesse thinks that's cool. So he goes and he buys his own. This camera's nice. Too hot. That's it. Plot hole filled, spackled, and repainted. <laughs> Jesse films everything, including Crazy Anna, who lives downstairs. That's Crazy Anna's apartment. She lives right under me. A power bottom. And his health conscious grandma, who drinks a lot. Uh, <laughs> this staggering and hauntingly beautiful footage pushes Jesse to also purchase a GoPro, because he's just swimming in graduation money, I guess. And the first thing he does is throw Hector down some stairs in a laundry basket. <laughs> Oh shoot. Oh shoot. That valedictorian named Oscar just came out of Crazy Anna's apartment. What are you doing here, man? And before we go any further, I know what you're thinking, David. No! None of these characters are related to Martine from the second movie. We keep the good ones. Yes. That's racist. Hispanic people aren't all related, Dave. I don't know why you would think that. Although, yes. I'm a little surprised they aren't as well, given that the series is so fascinated with randomly having everybody secretly related to each other through a series of complicated broken marriages, but no, not in this instance. In with the good, out with the bad. Yeah. Yay. Back to crazy Anna for a minute. Jesse and Hector use a complicated system of pulleys and ropes to drop a GoPro down their air vent into her apartment to see a sequel escalated full frontally nude woman. Oh, Daddy, chill. Which causes Hector to say what I said on my wedding night. There's a naked girl, there's a naked girl. But unlike my wedding night, the, the naked girl here is getting painted on by a full frontally nude old woman, Crazy Anna, which is very erectorally confounding. I just lost my boner, man. Well, oh, I hope you find it. We're up, we're down, we're hot, we're cold, we're in, we're out. No time for the old in and out, love. My dick's soft, like forever. The next day, Hector and Jesse tell Marisol about the best night of their lives, and they collectively remember, oh yeah, isn't Anna like a witch? She's some bruja or witch or whatever. A witch! A witch! Or running a whorehouse? She's running a whorehouse. Or both? Both. Both is good. We should send a kid to knock on her. Ah, witch attack! <laughs> Later that night, they bump into Oscar fleeing from the apparent scene of Anna's death. <laughs> and also there's an explosion. <laughs> to foretaste further explosives to come. <laughs> The three amigos break into Anna's apartment to find a locked fridge and a bunch of tchotchke sh** and torture stuff and also Katie's VHS tapes. Katie, Katie and Christy. Backdoor sluts nine! VHS? That is old school. And there's some blood and a freaky ass book journal and whoops! Uh -huh. Oscar's gangster brother, Arturo? Holy oh, sh**! Oh. I'm so startled. Truly a Kmart of horror in there. So like... A regular modern day Kmart. I just shit the bed! Got it! They read the journal and, uh, okay, it details how one might build a time travel portal door right, Scott. that exclusively lets you time travel to unholy places. So basically, imagine if the machine they build an end game, but it only let them travel to Dave's bed when he was 14. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't want to mess with that kind of dark, sticky magic. Just let it go. We're just gonna around and then. You know? Nothing's gonna happen. There was a ghost!
That was an unholy place, Dave. That is an unholy place. Oh my god. I had underworld DVDs. <laughs> just, just stacked. But I guess they've graduated high school and they got nothing else to do, so they spray paint a mirror black and break into a church or something to say some evil Spanish words like incubo. What's the incubo? Which I assume is the Spanish translation for the most unholy band. <laughs> Nothing really happens, so Hector leaves and Marisol and Jesse investigate weird noises until eventually Jesse peeks under a bathroom stall and seemingly pisses off a shitting demon. The next day, Hector draws a dick on Jesse's face and Jesse recaps a dream about a farm full of old women. Sounds like a good dream. <laughs> oh, but they were old. Ah, fully. Which kind of just sounds like the plot of Walking Dead season two, but, but like with old women instead of zombies. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, but hey, Jesse's got a weird bite on his arm. Like a bite or something. Like a zombie bite landed the plane. <laughs> that night, Jesse wipes the dick off his face and they play that old Simon memory game, except actually it turns into a Ouija board because that's way easier than coming up with a reason why they play with a Ouija board. Like kids are always playing the Simon memory game from like 1982. Simon. Grandma doesn't like the game, though. She must have a terrible memory. I can't remember. This is dumb to say, I will admit that, but it feels like a lot of this movie is yellow filtered, like it's set in Mexico. I mean, is there something about the Spanish language that just makes cameras go sepia? Is that part of the haunting? I don't know. But speaking of haunting, Hector just sh his pants. Because of the demon. What do you got? I think I just started. <laughs> hey, if I poop my pants making this video, Dave, it's because of a demon, okay? It has nothing to do with the fact that we just ate a ton of Arby's, okay? The ceremony of meat. And yeah, because of all this demon shit, Grandma walks around the house spraying anti-demon shit Lysol. Oh, man. Is She's trying to protect the house. It smells really bad, though. I sprayed it with Lysol. Hector and Jesse are later accosted by some bad dudes, but it's cool because Jesse explodes them with his demon mind, or, or maybe demon fecal matter, it's hard to tell. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And the next day, he realizes he literally cannot fall over. What are you doing? What? Demons apparently are great at trust fall exercises, unlike Hector. <laughs> Then Jesse shreds some absolute CG gnar, and yeah, this is what I was talking about, baby. Oh, <laughs> this series has been begging for some terrible, pointless action CG, and magic skateboarding is exactly what I've been craving. God. That's incredible! Oh my god! They throw their videos up on YouTube, and the comments are about par with what I usually get. Oh, so fake. Nobody thinks I'm actually being tortured by Dave, but I am, and I love it. Uh, okay. Whoop. Jesse is really feeling his power now. So he and Hector go to a random party, pick up some chicks, and they bring them back to that abandoned apartment where a murdered woman's blood is still sprayed all over the walls. Maybe they used to live here and she got murdered. Right, right here. Yeah. I swear to God. And where Jesse has laid out just the softest, most romantic sheet of cardboard. What a gentleman. This woman, Penelope, asked Jesse to literally and apparently on camera, because I guess she just swept up in the romance of the cardboard and the arterial spray. Blood could have been like spaghetti sauce. Menstruation. Who knows? <laughs> oh, no. it's, it doesn't have to be gross. It's natural. Yikes. But Jesse needs to go grab a romantic condom from the condom store. <laughs> and while he's gone, she gets a head start by exploring a few holes by herself. <laughs> Like this trap, this trap door leading to some secret bee hole, ba basement hole. <laughs> Whoops! Oscar is down there. <laughs> so Penelope runs away, and Oscar also runs away, and Jesse comes back to find that there are no holes left for him to explore. Uh, holes Except, whoops, Oscar shows up again and is like, my guy, Anna put this thing inside me, which is why I killed her. She put it inside me. And you got it too. And the only way to get rid of it is to kill yourself, my dude. And then he runs away and Jesse chases him until Oscar yeets himself off a roof. Yeah. So I guess that explains why Oscar was valedictorian. I mean, demons gave him math powers. It's not illegal, it's frowned upon. 
What a lame thing to trade possession for. Like, is he even good at lacrosse? That's what I would use my demon powers for. Maybe then I would have gotten into UVA. Um, they really suck. I went to James Madison. We've all heard of that, right? Every president comes from James Madison University. They redid it, so it's nice now. It's not as filthy. I'm sure it wasn't founded in like 1910 as a girl's school. And Dave, let me tell you what, there are still girls there at James Madison. And boys, I, you know. Both, both, both. both. Both is good. But no, the trio head down into Penelope's hole to I see a lot of holes today. And they find weird photos of Jesse and his pregnant mom who died birthing him and also the friggin' grandma from the third movie. There's that random pointless connection I've been looking for. This is white lady. It's grandma. They're briefly interrupted by a creeping old white lady that may or may not be the grandma from the third movie, but it's fine. She doesn't find them, even though they're constantly like shining the camera light through the floor slats. Jesse later has a bathroom freak out, pulling out of his eyes and stuff. And dude, you better know how to do like really advanced calculus or be able to play long stick and short stick midi because otherwise I don't even know if this possession is worth it. They go to Arturo again and be like, hey, was Oscar as good at math as I am now? And he's like, yeah, check out this crazy conspiracy board he made. Take a look at this. Jesus Christ. That includes references to Allie, the daughter from the second movie. Apparently Oscar was always talking about a bunch of witches that were building an army with firstborn boy childs. And hey, did you know Oscar's mom also died during childbirth? I stumbled onto a major company conspiracy. We gotta go. We're doing, Come on, we should check go. this stuff out. And Jesse is like, well, I hate this. I'm leaving to go drown my sorrows in a beef and cheddar or something. And Hector grabs Allie's phone number just in case we need a cameo scene later. But unfortunately, Jesse gets confused and ends up in a grocery store and he just flips out when he can't get his meat fix. What are you man? doing, man? Where's the beef? Hey, Simon Ouija board, does Jesse even have a good penis? That night, Jesse's dog ends up in Penelope's hole. So uh, Jesse goes down there and finds a couple of freaky white girls who are, I guess, the young versions of Katie and Christy. And also he's attacked by something else that I can't make out but it's probably Martine or Robbie or maybe that ghost therapist from the first movie. I mean, you know, surely everything at this point is a cameo because cameos die. It's grandma. Tight, tight, tight. Speaking of, even though Jesse survives this encounter, he's pretty mean the next day. We're not best friends. Ah! And he keeps dicking around with his dog. <laughs> So Hector and Marisol call Allie for an expositional chat and uh, she's like, okay, here's the deal. There's a bunch of witches who call themselves midwives. The sign of the midwives, they're a coven. Which I think is a show on Netflix. and they mark children in utero for possession or whatever, but it doesn't really manifest until they're 18 because check this out, 18? More like three sixes. Six, six, six. Wow, does she also have demon math skills? Oh, and also they're gonna take Jesse to this random house and do one last ritual to make him like full on demon possessed or whatever. So I guess you guys should probably go there and stop that from happening. But before that, they enlist the help of Jesse's grandma and she takes him to like an anti-demon store to get some eggs. Did someone ask for an egg? Just eggs. Is she gonna make Jesse eat them? I can eat 50 eggs. <laughs> That'd be ridiculous. She's gonna rub them all over Jesse. Just like whole eggs. Eggs! Not broken eggs, just an egg. Egg! But this pisses him off till he smashes the eggs. Egg. And then he kills the power and like warp explodes the room because hell yeah, baby. Sequel their asses, Jesse! All that computer generation has made Jesse sleepy. <laughs> so he sleeps for a long time till he feels rest enough to throw his grandma down the stairs. Jess? I've fallen and I can't get up. Causing Hector to finally put the camera down. Give up! Throwing grandma down the stairs is also the only way I can get my kids to put down their iPads and have a real conversation as a family for once. It's just tough because I can really only do that move twice, you know? Grandpas just don't have the same effect I found. Nobody gives a shit.
about grandpas. A bunch of liars spending their whole lives in bed until suddenly their grandson wins the tour of a chocolate factory. Oh, and now they can dance? Cause I've got a golden ticket. It's ours, Joe. It's like the only time in this whole series where somebody's like, all right, well, Grandma was thrown down the stairs by a demon-possessed guy, so I guess I'll put the camera down and check on her. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> You're losing YouTube money, though. You gotta do it. <laughs> Mr. Beast throws 7,000 grandmas down the stairs or whatever. Thank you! $10,000 to whoever can throw the most grandmothers down the stairs! But, uh... Throwing grandmothers down this million dollar staircase. It's like. <laughs> we threw grandma down a one dollar, a hundred dollar, a thousand dollar, and a million dollar staircase. A million dollar staircase. It's like the staircase from the Titanic. Thank you. Oh my god, I want what? Jesse disappears, so Marisol and Hector head to the house where the ritual is supposed to happen in the hopes of doing something. But before they can get there, the car dies. Thank you. And Jesse attacks, <laughs> forcing Marisol to brain him with Chekhov's bat. And I forgot to mention from earlier. And they throw Jesse in the back seat, but then boom! They're hit by another car, which is apparently driven by witches, who steal Jesse and drive away. Because this is peak Hollywood action, baby. No more slow ass door openings. It's the season of witches t boning shit. What does happen to be? Yeah, dude. Get crushed by witches slamming in the back of their tank. Marisol and Hector call in the big guns by convincing Arturo and his large friend to literally bring some big guns to the house, which, wouldn't you know it, happens to be the grandma's house from the third movie. Oh shit. Here we go again. They wander around for a while until they're attacked, forcing Arturo to literally shotgun witches to death. <laughs> Hell yeah! Sequels! Oh shit. Here we go again. For the rest of the movie, Hector runs around with the camera still on, and he sees some seance stuff, and Marisol disappears and then reappears. <laughs> and then Jesse appears and maybe throws a sheet at him. Distract target. Discombobulate. So Hector escapes through a Satan time travel door to the end of the first movie where he witnesses Katie murder Mika. <laughs> Mika is so upset. And then Jesse kills him. <laughs> cool, I guess. And then Katie presumably goes through the door to Dave's 14 year old bed and is just plastered to it. Dave didn't learn about socks until he was 16. Plastered. <laughs> <laughs> like, under the ceiling. Oh, it's all over. It's everywhere. This is an unholy place. Somebody like frozen in carbon. Yeah. Chewbacca sadly sitting in the corner. <laughs> Firm matted. Uh, hey, can somebody explain why you, a witch trying to build an army of demon-possessed firstborn boy childs, would also need a time travel door that only travels to unholy places? What does that add to your plan, exactly? What is your plan? What the hell is even going on? How are these movies still earning minimum ten times their budget? Madness. I hope witches get a tank in the next one. Because the real monster in this movie is the woke demilitarization of our country's witches. <laughs> I agree with that. Joe Biden won't let witches have tanks. <laughs>
we told you Except, uh, somebody apparently picked up the camera and continued filming because how else would we see this ponytail guy who's now the girl's teacher? He's gonna be your teacher. A man with a ponytail. And hey, Christy, you're gonna have a chosen son and Katie, your gift is your strength. This man with a ponytail makes a valid point. And also there's another girl out there that, that's like you guys, so cool. Yeah, I can see why they needed to film this. It's gonna be a great moment for the annual Midwives Coven Convention announcement trailer. A lot is going to be asked of you. And literally, why are they filming this on like VHS tapes? For who? Fast forward to November 2013 and this other girl named Leela. Hey, Leela. Draws her Uncle Mike. Uncle Mike? Screaming? Oh, sh there he is! <laughs> Mike is here because he got dumped. Probably because he's clumsy. You have a lot of. I'm breaking up with you. I left her, so that's. And besides Leela's parents, a random sexy woman named Skylar is also staying with them because what's the point of being able to afford such a massive house if you can't populate it with random sexy women and sad uncles? That's the American dream. She's, she's American. Ostensibly, Skylar's the wife's friend who is here for a retreat or something, but we all know that friend means boobs and retreat means boobs. <laughs> now the sentence makes sense. You're here for rehab, right? That's. No, I'm not here for rehab. Mike and Daddy wrap Christmas lights to distract themselves from their mutual friend's massive friendships. Just, you know, two robust reindeer. When they stumble upon a box with a huge ass video camera and some VHS tapes. Now the camera seems shitty at first. I don't know if it's out of focus or what. But actually, it's just tuned to the ghost dimension. Which in this instance means it sees Demons, I think, and not ghosts. It's custom built. You wouldn't get it. Most cameras have three tubes, but this one has like six tubes. It traditionally has three picture tubes, uh -huh. right? This one has six. Oh my god. That's a lot of tubes. That's too many tubes. <laughs> What are you gonna do with all these extra tubes? You're gonna see, I hate to, you're gonna see ghosts on these tubes. <laughs> Dude, I hate to, I hate to, I hate to tell you this, but like, you have so many tubes, you're gonna see ghosts. I have no idea what this does. And man, we're full on with the CG dust demon clouds of death, huh? No more slipping off bed covers with invisible wires for this series. We're gonna see it all. Sex? That's right. It never happened. <laughs> Oh no, the dust thing is gone, but the wife is here, meaning daddy's thing is back. I will have sex with you. I can't see the thing anymore, I think it's gone. Oh, now the dust talks to Leela. Bummer. Looks like we're basically gonna redo the third movie, but instead of not being able to see everything, we will get to see everything. Which, as we all know, is much scarier. The best scary movies have the villain fully visible and well lit at all times. I hope you're having an evil day today. Who are you talking to? And hey, look, now they're watching the sex footage from the third movie, which is also a fond memory of mine. But then they start watching, I guess, old training footage of the sisters. Oh. Oh, use what's inside. This is like, why the hell would the dumbass witches film this? Like, who is this footage for? Witch age. Is this girl? She's just taking minutes. Yeah. Obviously, Dave is into it, but the movie couldn't have been made exclusively for him. He's there. Sorry. Also, weirdly, 1980s Katie describes Leela's room in the present, which is. Crazy. She's describing Leela's room. Did you eat more chocolate than I did? Man, I wonder if they have a time travel held portal door or some shit. That's the only logical explanation. <laughs> ah, crap. My brain and also the house blew a fuse. Mike and Daddy follow some ghost shit around until Mike disappears for a second. And if he doesn't do a jump scare, I'll give every single patron one billion dollars. <laughs> Oh well, next time. I hope you're hungry for nothing. Uh. Sign up for my Patreon for your chance to win my next reckless bet. I'm like Mr. Beast, except nobody ever wins. And also you will definitely stay blind. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have any money. Thank you. Hey, Skylar, would you say this tricked out camera picks up beans or just different planes of existence? Most of the time, these cameras, they don't pick up on beans as much as, you know, different Planes of existence. Okay, gotcha. That makes sense. I mean, it's got six tubes. There's really only one thing. The the next movie, they're gonna have nine tubes. And <laughs> you get ghosts. Next one, what do you get? I don't know. Or yeah. some <laughs> What kind of stuff have you been seeing? Big ass titties! Anyway, mommy and daddy are going on a date. Don't break my camera or bang my brother. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, I'm gonna need some wine. Oh.
something skittering about it. Oh no, something invisible is riding the seesaw. What? Oh no, something's jumping out of the pool. Oh no, here's Leela. Ah! Oh, go back to bed, Leela. No. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really feeling the lack of explosions and also this not just being a different movie from a more interesting franchise, or even just a one-off movie. Remember those? No. Ooh, get that juice, Daddy. You're rich, and you're also being haunted. You deserve it. And also, you're a video game developer, maybe? I gotta get this game out before Christmas break, dude. And your last name is Fleege? What kind of AI-ass, backwards-ass name is that? Let's tear it all down. That night, Leela bloodily smacks at the mirror and says Bloody Mary backwards, and also a demon smacks the mirror too, I guess. And Skylar is like, to be clear, Bloody Mary summons witches, either to A, tell you who you're gonna marry, or B, choke you. Sploosh! Yep. That's what I'm talking about! And Uncle Mike is probably thinking like, choke me, Skylar, you well-endowed witch! But when I used to play it, Bloody Witch appears and grabs you by the neck. But actually, he just dicks around in the yard and finds some concrete drawings suggesting that actually this was Katie and Christie's house back in the day, like 1988. It's just that that burned down, as alluded to in the first movie. There was a fire. Whoa, whoa. And then the whole family reportedly died, so they built this new house on top of it, even though Katie and Christie both didn't die and still very much exist later on. And Daddy is like, that's it. I'm setting up a system of cameras to try and figure out what's going on here. And his wife is like, yeah, that makes sense. Fine, do it. I shouldn't. Do it. That should just about do it. Later, Leela is like, mom, did I die when I was a baby? And her mom is like, unfortunately, no. There was a cord in mommy's tummy and it got wrapped around her neck. Sploosh. But obviously here you are being weird as shit and ruining everybody's fun, sexy Christmas vibes. I wish I knew how. Did I die? That night, Leela wakes up, and then the next day, she bites a kid at school so hard he needs stitches, and like, man, I remember my first kiss. My pants needed stitches, right, Dave? Actually, you know me pretty well. Do you remember who my first kiss was? Um, I think I do. Oh, I'm not gonna name names. Mouth it to me. No. Oh, it wasn't? Uh-uh. Was it? Uh, like... How many people do you think I was kissing? Come on! Oh, shit. Yeah. That's some deep lore. Do you know the story of how that happened too? I liked one girl, I liked another girl, they both liked me. I had never even hugged a girl. Very confused, wasn't sure what to do. This one girl, uh, we go to a football game together. It's loud, there's footballs happening. She says, uh, I've got a secret or something. And I'm like, oh, did you hook up with some other guy? I don't know why I assumed a bad thing. And then she leans in and I whole ass turn my ear and she goes, what? And I turn to her and I go, and she, and go what? And then she kisses me and I'm like, oh no, there's like 7,000 people at this football game. And then we left to take her home and my dad walks up and I'm like, <gasps> anyway, there's a story for no one. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Uh, and just like that, it's night number one. Who the hell decided that this night is night number one exactly? I mean, weird shit has been happening for literally two weeks of the movie. I don't know, but look at this crazy black smoke demon, which like, wow, lost much? Man in black much? Where's Jacob when you need him? Hey, go, don't do this. Amazing how much less scary this is than even the nothing we used to have to look at. Uh. Leela talks to it though, which is, Thrilling. Okay. And then Skylar comes in to check on her and it blasts her in the back and she's like, wowzers. A power bottom. And the next day, Leela confirms, yeah, it's Toby again. Leela, who's Toby? A twink with muscles, but still hairless. So smooth. Oh, incredibly smooth. I personally would love a new demon named Chad, but at least we're finally seeing Toby for the first time and he is sexy. Oh look, it's the movie's best joke, but also ironically the best way to describe every single scene with CG Toby in it. Do you see the dip shit, man? It's like particles of dip shit. The girls on the tapes talk about Toby during their cult training exercises or whatever, and there's particles everywhere, and there's another bloodless, impactless Toby attack. Do you see the dip shit, man? And just tons of general CG smoke demon shit. And Leela tries unsuccessfully to burn the house down. And then Toby tries unsuccessfully to Dutch oven mommy. And then throws the angel off the top of the Christmas tree and a Bible in the fireplace. And it's overall, yo, know, a pretty eventful night. That Bible is my Bible from upstairs. It was in the fireplace. 
Are you too good for your home? Then they watch another tape showing cult dude taking over the house from the third movie. And like, I'm surprised they haven't tried to leave for a hotel yet. Evidence is coming very hard and fast this go around. They can literally see the demon. This one has six. Oh my God. They have tons of footage of him, plus all these freaky tapes. I don't care if Toby can follow him. They don't know that. It's not like that. I'd get the hell out of there. It's not like they don't have money. They've been chugging juice like it's nothing. Just pounding juice. Juice is expensive. Have you ever tried to buy juice? I have. <laughs> I'm rich, clearly. Orange juice, apple juice, you name it. We had grape juice once. That's too much juice. All the juices. Well, that's what you got all these kids. You gotta give them juice. Open wide, kids! Cause I've got a grape you in the mouth! Ah! To further make my point, it turns out the girls in the video are literally watching them right now as they watch them. I see toys. Dude. Like mental time travel. Like Katie? More like Kitty. Pride. X-Men. No! I see people. Brothers. In a van, and then a meteor hit, and they ran as fast as they could. Oh, dude. The f I had to Google some nerd shit to find that answer out, because I don't know X-Men. I'm cool. I kissed a girl in high school. <laughs> On accident, seemingly, sort of. I didn't know it was happening, but I was definitely there when it did. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was not like, oh. I'm so sad that Logan died in old age on a branch. I was like, nah. <laughs> Not this time. Anyway, this is confirmed when Leela comes in the room and sneezes, and Katie on the video says, bless you. Leela sneezes, and then Christy says, bless you. Yeah, the literal demon-worshipping mental time-traveling child says, bless you to a sneezing doofus in her vision. Amazing. This movie is art. Wouldn't you say literally anything else? Don't you worship demons? I don't think you want God blessing them. This will be a polite demon. Yeah. Nobody said that demon witches weren't kind. I'm a demon. I'm not uncouth. What are we? We're, we're, we're not swimmers. They find a bunch of Leela's weird drawings and are like, ah, oh, dang, did you know there's a coven of witches from the Middle Ages with similar drawings? And also they open doorways in time. Anyway, listen to Leela just friggin' crushing it on the recorder. Wait. What the f***? Then Toby, the demon, dresses up, I think literally as Santa Claus, but like you wouldn't be able to know that he was dressed as Santa Claus unless you had a six tubed camera. <laughs> Did you see that? So Toby dressed as Santa is just standing at the end of the hallway. I guess he just got into the Christmas spirit. I, this movie is so weird. But anyway, I guess that confirms that Santa is a literal demon, which does explain how he has access to so much coal. I mean, hell is full of coal. That's how they keep the fire stoked. Somebody needs to warn the children. And we need to put the Christ back in Christmas ASAP. Demon attack. <laughs> anyway, because the mom is, I guess, a Christian despite this. What the this is why you're going to hell. They decide to call all the Catholic priests in town until one agrees to come case their joint. And he's like, your daughter is for sure being stalked by a demon. And like, we know father. And he's like, so don't go anywhere. It'll follow. And like, we know father. And then he anoints Leela with some holy water and also Bubba. Does your friend have a name? His name is Geraldine. It's Bubba. But as we all know, you don't f with Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> So Leela bites the priest and he's like, I think I'll come back later. Stay relaxed. They find some tape of the house from like right before they moved in and also their realtor was named Katie and I think they're trying to suggest that it's the same Katie as all the other movies but the name is different, the last name is different. You know, I'm not saying it had to do with the haunting stuff. I don't, I'm not saying that at all. I don't know what it was. And anyway, regardless, they realized they were tricked into moving into this house. They're saying that they've never heard of her. She never worked for them. Because it's somehow useful for the witch's nefarious plans. But like, I thought the whole thing about demons was they were mobile. Like literally it doesn't matter where you go, they're able to follow. So what difference does it make if they're in this house? A plot twist for no reason? And we weren't even looking in this neighborhood. Remember? I remember. <laughs> I don't know. Here are a few more shots of the demon running around and bumping into shit, but otherwise generally causing no harm whatsoever. Like, what, 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 what? <laughs> 
never gonna financially recover from this. I get that it's weird to look at, but it's proven over and over that when it jumps at you, it doesn't actually do anything. And in fact, if you didn't have a six tube magic ghost dimension camera, you wouldn't even know it was there. They just keep like looking through the camera and the thing goes, ah! And they're like, whoa, well, what do you guys want for a snack? <laughs> wrong with your house? But whatever. Now they're scared enough to take their evidence to the cops. I don't know what they're gonna do. And daddy takes Mike with him, leaving mommy and Leela behind because he needs backup. I love you. We'll be back as soon as we can, all right? Why wouldn't he leave Mike with mommy? And while we're at it, leave Skylar with me. Yeah, they're not using their resources right. And yeah, what do you know? Toby talks to Leela. Crazy. Fun connection. Hunter and Leela have the exact same birthday. And also Hunter is in a tape from 1992 because time travel. Here I come. Oh, here I come. Look, there he is. There he is, right there. And why do they want a girl now? I feel like these dumb witches' goals change every movie. What does he want? What do you want? I don't know, who cares? Leela draws a bunch of symbols on her wall that I guess open a time portal to hell. The old glory hole! She goes into the portal, the time portal, and man, how far have we come in this series, am I right? I lost them on the counter. Sure. Sonic Blast! Finally, they decide to leave, and the next day, Skylar and Mike gather some dildos and Super Nintendos and other important things that they left behind in their hasty exit, and they find some more weird Leela drawings. And they're like, oh my god, this sheep drawing? What if the witches are using them in some kind of ritual to, to give Toby a human body? And that is crazy. It also seems like kind of a big jump from a weird sheep drawing to being like, I, de I think this means that a demon is going to become flesh with these two kids. Oop, looks like Leela was transported from the hotel to the house anyway to paw at the wall. Because again, physical location doesn't matter. He's a demon. He can do whatever. And mommy and daddy aren't far behind, but they probably had to take a cab. I don't think they were able to demon Uber their way. <laughs> Where am I? We were at a hotel, six miles away. And oh look, there's Father Todd again. And he's like, okay, here's the deal. I don't think we need an exorcism per se, because that's a different franchise. An exorcism is a remedy for someone who's possessed. And I do not think that's what's happening right here. I'll allow it. But I do think we need to do an extermination. And to prove this, I'm just gonna say a bunch of random shit in literal montage. I believe that this is no coincidence. And I believe she's part of a prophecy. The witches on those tapes, the midwives. Also, the reason Hunter and Leela are important is because they're both born June 6, 2005. Sixth month, sixth day, sixth year of the two thousands. The sixth year, 2005, 666. Six, six. Also it's D-Day, and also it's the 60, what, like 61st anniversary of it? Ah! Your daughter was born on June 6th, 2005, right? Also, did you know that this is the sixth movie in the Paranormal Activity franchise? And if you watch it six times, Satan will appear in front of you and ask if everything's okay. Are you depressed? Why did you watch this movie even one time? That's too many times. Let's get you some help. I'm Satan, and I feel bad. Bless you. So, like, if you keep doing something too much, eventually there's, um, a dopamine f*** up, right? Anyway, why don't you guys make a Satan thing on the ground? This is me, I'm Father Todd again. And I'll do a boring sermon. And hopefully that'll get the demon to trap himself in the symbol circle. Protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And the demon grabs and chucks Todd and it throws a lot of stuff. But then, yeah, he gets caught in the circle. So they chuck a sheet on it to save on CG costs. And then they sort of try to pray the gay away and everything seems good. If you want to change, there is a way to do it. Oh my God, it works. But then, oh dang, the gay comes back with a vengeance and Skylar pukes acid on Mike. <laughs> Stop. My penis can only get so erect. And daddy gets impaled in the chest. <laughs> Yikes! And mommy is forced to chase Leela through the wall hole to the still intact house from the third movie where there are tarps everywhere and there's freaky little girls and they say You're too late. Because he's real now. And sure enough, they took a drop of Leela's blood and grew Toby some freaky ass legs and he kills mommy. 
<laughs> and then he and Layla, maybe they head out to grab some beef and cheddars or something. I hope that answered all of your questions about demons and the lore of this franchise. They, they didn't need firstborn sons. That was a ruse. They just needed these two random ass kids. And they're not building an army. They're building a Toby body. And I guess that's it. How does Katie not remember this? <laughs> or rather, even some much more benign version of, like she remembers some of it, but like none of it accurately. She's like, I do remember being haunted, but I forgot the 12 years I spent training to be a witch ninja or whatever. And why does she need to kill Mika exactly? Just so that she can be unencumbered when she grabs Hunter from her sister. And how did Hunter get adopted by somebody else in the, in the, like she, Katie grabs Hunter, but then he gets adopted by another family and named Wyatt. And who the hell is Robbie? And what does the fifth movie have to do with any of this? This was marketed as the final movie in the series that would answer all of the questions, uh, but I don't think, I think it did not. Oh, I think, I think the demon left. You scared the shit out of me. <laughs> you, you doing, dude? Oh, I got another demon, but he's Amish, so I trapped him in the microwave, but he said he's not gonna go away entirely until I talk about the random, like, one-off sequel thing that they made, so... We got a few minutes, so I just go to the bedroom? Like, how do I say this? Like nice butts like that? Immediately. I'm like, damn girl, that's a fine ass camera. You got focused on your fine ass face. And she's like, I'm gonna meet my first fine ass biological relative ever named Samuel. Oh shit, there he is. Ah, this fine ass camera is run by a fine ass man named Chris, hoping to make a fine ass documentary. Man, there is more fine ass here than a donkey brothel. He's, he's getting undressed. Los hombres de región tienen sexo con burra porque... Yeah, that's enough of that. Samuel's like, I've actually uh, never uh, been in front of a camera before. Because obviously that's a sin because I'm Amish. Uh, but right, right. there are exceptions. So uh, you said that this is going to be a documentary? And the girl Margo is like, that's crazy that you're Amish. It is only farce. I'm adopted because my ostensibly Amish mommy abandoned me back at the hospital in 1997. You are Amish! <laughs> And she'd never met a living relative until Samuel did 23 and Me while on his rum springer or whatever, and they were a match. Do you want to tell the story? Already, this documentary doesn't appear to have anything remotely resembling a compelling hook. Feels kind of self-indulgent, but... But also, you know, they can't let that fine-ass camera go to waste, am I right? A thousand pictures. One second. A thousand? No one man should have all that power. That's a great camera. I'm right. So they fly to Amish country and meet up with the sound guy, Dale. I got COVID like five times. And as they drive, there are drone shots and inserted music. And I think we're gonna be pretty relaxed with the whole found footage thing. Look what I found. The footage. Uh, nope. Yes, Chris is the one flying the drone, but that music could only have been inserted in post-production. Now he's inserting a <laughs> into this. Stop it. Anyway, they arrive at an Amish house, which is like a normal house, but with more candles and beards. And they're like, nah, bitch, y'all can't stay here. Bad news. <laughs> we'll see, bitch. So they go to a hotel, but then a freaky ass Amish kid who is, I guess, smuggling a boombox preloaded with horror stings. Oh my God. <laughs> No, Amish boy. Shows up and they take him back to the Amish house and they're like, fine, bitch, y'all can stay here. Thanks for bringing our freak ass bitch Amish kid back. That's how Amish talk. Wow. Oh, it's beautiful. I just tried to get it. I just tried to capture their natural Amish cadence. It's perfect. Thank you so much. It's fun because you can make fun of Amish people because they'll literally never see the videos. <laughs> they can't. Ha, got you. This was like a, this was entrapment. <laughs> this is how I catch Amish that are using YouTube. <laughs> Got you. I've been hired by your dad. And he's really grateful. Younger members of the Amish community often experiment with influences from the outside world. <laughs> Amish don't have police. Anyway, that night there are some weirdos in the dark with lanterns and the next day is my 30th birthday? Ah, coincidence? There are no coincidences in paranormal activity, Bob. This means something. Probably I'm Robbie. Wow, dude. Oh man, I bet there are pigs here. Are those pigs? Also, oh. also. There's pigs. Okay. Also, also. And I bet their asses are fine. Do they all have, like, 
How do I say this? Like nice butts like that? Stop. I think I could get used to this whole Amish thing. Hey, you guys want to see the loft? Yes. Can we? I mean, look at all these bee holes. There's just lots of holes around here. Barn holes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. It's huge. And Dale gets so into it, he goes full native. <laughs> <laughs> Although it does kind of make him look like a. Did you ask him a cool? I'm married! Uh? They wander around and ask people about Margot's mom named Sarah and learn that she hooked up with somebody outside the community. And also, according to this weird kid, she's maybe still alive, but also does not like Margot. What did you say? He doesn't like you. We'll see, bitch. Sounds like a pretty classic mom to me. Oh, the thought of me dead gives you an erection? Wait. Weird things happen that aren't even really worth mentioning, but check out Chris's camera's fine-ass slow-mo. Slow-mo, attack! Dave, why don't my videos look this good? Film me doing something cool in slow-mo or you're fired. Well, that night, Margot sneaks into the attic because she hears noises, and there are things that happen. Including finding a letter from her mom, and also a weird water stain, and the classic demon face in the window thing. I've seen 400 demon faces in the past week, but man, they still scare me so bad. It's like, demons aren't supposed to have faces. I thought their whole thing was no face, but a really nice butt. Do they all have, like... How do I say it? A great dumper. Yes. Every single demon. I'll allow it. The next day, Margot talks to the Amish king, Jacob. Or wildflower. And confronts him with the letter and he's like, yeah, Sarah, my daughter, really sucked and tried to kill herself a lot, which led to us shunning her. And we tried to give her kid to another couple in the community, but then she ran away and it's like, what you gonna do, am I right? Kids, women, Amish. She was shunned. <laughs> Margot is like, wow, I guess that makes me sad. Yeah. My emotion! While flying his fly-ass drone, Chris finds a church in the woods about a mile away, but when Dale tries to pick the lock, Jacob shows up and is like, come on, hey, come on, don't go in there, come on, guys, let's go eat lunch. Lunch is ready, let's go eat it. Don't go in there, that place is special. Lunch is ready back at the house. Come with me. I hope you're hungry. But unfortunately, lunch is mashed potatoes and also peeled old lady arms. Ah. Uh. Uh, I guess you're forced to eat some weird stuff when you don't own a microwave. That night they hear something going on in the barn and it turns out Amish goats sometimes have two-headed goat babies. <laughs> and an old lady is like, it's starting to spread. Jacob is like, I know woman, God. We'll see, bitch. And they bring the dead goats to the church to presumably give them a hearty blessing. What are they doing? Something fucked up. Vomit and diarrhea. And so the next day, while most of the family is in town selling milk or buckets of fresh two-headed goat jizz or, I don't know, Amish. Sweet. Nice wiener. Dale distracts Samuel by sucking it riding a horse. <laughs> Chris and Margo break into the church because even though Chris was offended that Margo assumed he could pick a lock because he's black, it turns out he can pick a lock. Can you pick a lock? Oh, of course. I'm black. Voila. Huh. In the church, they find weird paintings of things like the demon Asmodeus or Asmodeus or whatever. Asmodeus, destroyer of... What's that? Which, by the way, I forgot to mention, is Toby's real, real name. He just Americanized it when he came through Ellis Island. How did you, how did you know? It's kind of my deal. Don't worry, I'm sure they're writing a prequel about that now. But also, oops, they find a sex swing and another gaping hole, so they sex swing Margo down there. I can see the bottom! How about him? Where she maybe sees a room in a weird, maybe alive thing that's presumably eating all the goats, and she's not thrilled by this, so they pull her back up. Pull me up! Pull me up! Pull me up! Hold up, Heineken. Hold up! Their van's battery dies, which will be a problem if they ever need to dramatically and quickly escape later. And Margot breaks into Samuel's room for some reason and finds a whole ass laptop. I don't know much about computers other than other than the one we got in my house. And wireless stuff and evidence that he's been stalking Margot for at least a full year and illicitly watching my videos, I think. Uh, okay. Whoop. Stop all the downloading! Thank you, Samuel. Like and subscribe. Join my Patreon. This makes her want to leave and probably deactivate her Facebook account. But remember what I said about the whole van thing? Battery? 
totally f***ing dead. Damn! Asmodeus, destroyer of batteries! Unfortunate timing, but it's cool. They'll try and get a new battery tomorrow. Hopefully nothing bad happens between now and then. Thank God time isn't linear. Someone once told me time is a flat. Glory hole! What? Like, for example, it'd really suck if that night Margo was attacked by a demon and thrown against the ceiling. <laughs> Where'd she go? And bled all over her pants and bed. <laughs> and the Amish doctor they call in says that she just PMS too hard. I'd say it's exhaustion, coupled with an unusually severe menstrual cycle. No, Amish boy. <laughs> Amish medicine uh, yeah. just isn't really the best. Yeah, it's not up to up to par in some aspects. She lost a fair amount of blood, but she's going to be fine. Really? Now, I know menstrual cycles can be tough, but they don't usually squirt you all the way to the ceiling. Unless you're Amish. It's in that butter. It churns so good. You be squirting all over the room. <laughs> she's a squirter. She's squirting! Peter, we got a squirter! Dale and Chris wander down the road hoping to hitchhike into town and are soon picked up by a male guy who is like, You know, the bill is ain't Amish. Oh, thank God, so all my jokes are fine. <laughs> right? Is that the... <laughs> <laughs> sure, they're weird, but they're not Amish weird. There's some other flavor of weird. Ceremony of meat. And they're like, ha, huh, well, hey, battery salesman, can we dick around on your computer? And he's like, sure, but just don't look up anything weird. So they do a classic Google search and determine that, yeah, there's demon stuff going on. Demonic prince of lust, suffering, and big ass titty. But it's okay, because at some point, some people found a way to trap the demon inside a woman and then transfer it to her daughter and etc. and etc. and so on and so on. On. And if they ever let it out, it'll kill everybody. But for now, it just maybe causes a heavy flow? Or maybe you have to eat two-headed goats at the bottom of a church hole? A sea hole? New at Hardee's. They get the car battery and head back to find all their shit, and also Margo missing, and Sam is being a weirdo. It's time. It's like, oh, sick, the bell is ringing. Well, better stay inside until that's over. And Chris is like, no, thank you. So he heads to the church to find Jacob packing heat. And again, all of this is being filmed. Like, they're just carrying a camera around. What are you doing? They fight a bit, and Jacob falls down the sea hole. I'm still alive, but I'm very badly injured. I think my legs might be broken. And there's that non-diegetic music again. And you know, other than the demon name and the existence of witches, there's really not much tying this movie to the rest of the franchise. But anyway, Chris also dives into the sea hole, and Jacob is looking rough. Okay. Chris finds a weird woman doing weird Amish stuff to Margo, and he knocks her over and grabs Margo. <laughs> yeah! And they are chased by a weird Amish demon lady who appears chained to the Amish wall. They both get pulled up the sea hole by Dale, but then the demon lady breaks her chains and isn't far behind. <laughs> it attacks Dale in dope ass slow mo. Because I guess Chris is changing settings on his camera on the fly to make sure that his future documentary is as dope ass as it can be. And hey, is anybody gonna give Margo a coat? Seems kind of selfish, dudes. Chris and Margo hide in the barn, but obviously they're attacked by the thing, and it knocks Chris down. So Margo grabs a meat hook and tries to do the whole, I'm your daughter, weird demon-possessed sewer lady. Surely your motherly instincts won't allow you to meat hook to the neck! <laughs> This is exactly how it went every Saturday morning when my mom tried to make me do chores. They scuffle a bit more, but Demon Mommy falls down Chekhov's b-hole and presumably dies. Chris is fine, I guess. But they have to go grab the van keys from Dale's slow mode dead ass, and on the way, we get more random music. And it turns out that they've gone full Amish crazy out here. Girlfriends barfed on boyfriends. Kids barfed on their parents. A fat lady barfed in her purse. <laughs> and everybody is murdering everybody, but it's cool because they get to the van, and after a few seconds of it not starting, it actually does start, and they full on escape. <laughs> Man, their documentary is gonna be so good, I bet it will skip theaters and go straight to Paramount Plus. The most prestige of platforms. But wait, we're not quite finished because a cop drives up and finds Sam fake crying like a baby. 
but then Sam makes him shoot himself in the head, and then another cop shoots himself in the head, and then Samuel steals the cop car and turns on some nice radio tunes while the credits play. Please. I know he's not actually Amish, but does Sam know how to drive a car? I guess he's imbued with Satan now, and you have to assume that the Prince of Darkness can drive stick, right? Ah! Yeah, cut. Should we get the demon out of the microwave? Oh, I totally forgot how to make it. Oh, no, I think we're good. I guess that explains why the microwave was so yucky. Good thing we got rid of both demons. What the heck? I'm under my bed. I think I heard something, but I'm not really sure. I just, I were the- <laughs>